Uh, it's uh, 7.09 on Tuesday, February 26th, and we're actually in the <coughs> this room called Community Room. Community Room, thank you. Me community Meeting Room, maybe. Community Room. Okay, so this evening, um, and the first thing on our agenda tonight is the Police Department budget. Uh, that will be presented by the Chief, Chief Miglianico. And I think David will come up. Going to help him? Yep. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we skip. <laughs> Trying to save on uh, color. Yeah. Yeah. Color. Save. Color. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We'll do a fundraiser for it next year. High time. Uh, I want to print color. But uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Migliaco. I'm the chief of police, and this is David Brown, lieutenant. We've got a couple of new people. Could the uh, new members of the finance committee just introduce yourself? Jeff Vandenberg, school leader, Howard, Howard, Howard D'Amico. Yep. Yep. Pam Holmes. Heather Morn. Joel Goggle is speaking. Okay. Welcome. Yep. Thank you. Um, so we'll get started. Um, there's basically three components, as you know, to the uh, police department budget. We have salaries, expenses, and our cruisers. So what I did is put a little PowerPoint together. Um, I'll just go through each slide. If you have okay. any questions, you can let me know. It's basically going to touch every line item in the budget. We'll give you a bottom of line uh, when we get to the end. So right now, the police department, we have 19 full-time personnel and 11 part-time personnel. We have myself, the lieutenant, three patrol sergeants, we have a detective sergeant, um, nine full-time patrolmen, um, with one assigned to the school, uh, four full-time dispatchers, five part-time <laughs> officers, and six part-time dispatchers. Um, so in the line items, um, first we have is the police salaries, which is uh, my salary and the lieutenant's salary. Um, and that combined is 206579. We'll move over to the next slide. Um, that's for all the full-time employees, so 13 full-time officers and four full-time dispatchers. Um, I'm looking to reclassify one of the dispatch positions to the uh, administrative secretary slash dispatch positions. That's another, another level on the public safety. It's just a reclassification of the position. Well, how long has Patty been gone now? I would say probably six years. Yeah, so six years ago when Patty Brule retired, she was in that position. Um, and we didn't backfill it when she left. So basically, the, uh, right. when I was the lieutenant, and it was spread out between me, the sergeants, and some of the dispatchers, and we we're all doing the uh, administrative function. So now, over the last year, I've had one of the dispatchers doing um, those duties, uh, public records requests, helping out with the doing paying the bills, helping with the payroll. So she's picked up a lot of slack. So I want to move her into that uh, different category. What's cost differential, please? Uh, it's probably, it's close to $3 more an hour per, um, so from per, the district. Per year, then, that would be? Uh, $6,000. Yeah. Thank right. you. Give it around there. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. But that frees up police time to do Well, yeah, it frees up, yeah, a lot of the administrative work. So the sergeants aren't getting bogged down with that. But if I look at that, when Patty left, we pretty much absorbed her yeah. position because so, it was a tough year. We were looking at laying people off. So, right, right, right. <coughs> so and that this, goes. This person has the skills to right, handle no, that. She's job. picked up on a lot of it really quickly, and she's been doing a great job at it. She's been doing it for um, last year and oh, well, half a year. We started training her at the beginning of the year last year, but mm -hmm. that it's about how it's right on. It's it's about six thousand dollars okay. um, more a year. <coughs> we pay him the big bucks for. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the only difference that, uh, other than um, routine um, step increases, that wherever the officers are in their contract, some move from like five, uh, you know, between steps. It, it depends on where they are from their hire date. When it's not every year that they get a step raise, they one, two and a half, four, and then five years, and then there's a jump between five and two. They don't get another step until. 10 years, so uh, any difference in the full-time wages is, is all contractual. Um, to move down to the part-time wage line, that covers all part-time personnel, um, which includes sick, vacation, holiday, personal days. Anytime we move 
um, two of our full-time dispatchers are also part-time officers. So if we need coverage on the road and we can take one of those um, full-time dispatchers, put them on a the road in a patrol position, and then backfill it with a part-time dispatcher, so it saves us some money there. We're not paying overtime, patrolmen overtime. But you got the coverage. So we got to co we got to cover that shift, and um, all the part-time wage money covers, like I said, sick time, any uh, vacation time, uh, and any changes we make to the schedule. So it goes to part-time shifts before we'll go to overtime. Uh, the overtime is uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Again, if we can't fill it with a part-timer, or if an officer gets um, stuck on a call and ends up um, being later than he is, and that goes to overtime, or if we officer has court um, court time, that is all calculated um, per the contract at, at time and a half. For the past couple of years, looking back, we average probably about 2,100 hours in overtime throughout the year. So this number, just the change in this number just reflects um, the change in the salaries and the change in the overtime rates. We, we haven't moved the hours at all, so we've, we've been staying right around that 2,100 hours. Now that's that's the, the way just to complete overtime, both the, the salary and the half-time. That's not just half-time. Right. That's the complete right. overtime. Right. Um, and that covers all full-time personnel, even the dispatch. So if we can't fill a, a dispatch yeah. shift with a, a part-time mm -hmm. dispatcher for some reason, mm -hmm. it covers that all the time as well. Um, then we move down to the education incentive. That, again, is uh, contractual. So right now we have two officers eligible with a master's degree, two with bachelor's degrees, and six with associate's degrees. So per the contract, that's going to be a $58,000 line item. So that's 10, up, 10 out of 11, then? Uh, that's, I believe, 10 out of uh, 15 full time okay. officers. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, moving on to the next page of shift differential wages. Um, again, another contractual item. So the officers working the 3 to 11 shift get an extra $9 an hour, and the officers working the overnight shift, um, 11 at night to 7 in the morning, get an extra $10 per shift. So if you average that out, um, three officers for uh, 365 days on the 3 to 11, and two officers uh, 365 days on the 11 to 7, and that comes out to 17,155. Chief, can I take you back? Sure. Just the previous page on overtime, I was just thinking about it. That number, that 111,287, mm -hmm. is that a number that stays relatively the same year over year, give or take, you know, a 5% fluctuation? Well, yeah, it does, and the reason why is we've looked back and we've looked back at the hours and yeah. trying to come. You can never really tell. I mean, you could get a a, a, a tough you know investigation that you yeah. go around the clock yeah. for a couple of hours. You could get a couple of guys say go out on injury illness or whatever. So it's it's hard to judge. But looking back over the past couple of years and that trends for like the last three years, we've been right around that twenty one hundred. Okay, which is. It's been fairly good because it, it, it's tough to judge, but it's been pretty steady. And the only reason it really changes is because if there's an increase in salary, you gotta go back to the hours and you gotta change the overtime rate. So okay. the of hours is the same. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Um, then we get down to uh, longevity wages. So th this is another uh, contractual obligation. So, <clears throat> so this year we're gonna have three that fall into the 25 to 30 year bracket, which is 1600. Uh, two will fall into the 20 to 25 years. One is in the 15 to 20 year. And we get five that are in 10 to 15. And one is going to be in the 5 to 10 category. So, and that comes up to 13,600. Then we have the uniform and cleaning, which is uh, another contractual item for all 15 officers, all full the full time officers. That comes up to 25 five. And. So if you total up the total salaries, you, you get the salaries, the full-time wages, part-time wages, the overtime, education, shift differential, longevity, and uniform allowance. Uh, that totals out to one million five eighty-three five fifty-one, and that's the salary side of the budget, which the majority of that is all contractual. <coughs> so, Chief, I just do a little math here. I noticed the salaries. Compared to a year ago, it's about forty-six thousand dollar difference. Is that just because of normal inflation, or are you talking about the full-time wages and salaries? Yeah, 
I'm talking. At, so at the very end. Yeah. Uh, when you have the two years compared. Yes. So total police salaries for now are fifteen eighty one million five eighty three, and a year ago they were one million five twenty six. Yeah, one five twenty six, and then it goes to one five eighty three, and that's yeah. that's because. And that money is basically would it be normal inflation <coughs> or? Well, it's, it's a new contract year. So in, in this new contract years uh, was a, a twenty year step added. So going into this contract, we have I believe th three people that are hitting the the twenty year step. So okay. that's an extra on that, that's an extra two point two five between steps. So it's that, and that top line is also includes the um, additional increase in the overtime hour rate. So that's the whole total salaries. But you, the, the answer to your question. <coughs> that, that so those people mean. hitting that twenty year step is a bit of a factor. Right. It, it? It's that, as well and as also the admin secretary. That, right, and you add that admin secretary to it, which is another six thousand dollars added into that. And then going back to your um, the first page here. Mm -hmm. Historically, how many full-time personnel have we had? I mean, last year, which is that more or less than? Uh, we well, we're at, yes, 15 full-time officers, yes. including me, and then the four full-time dispatchers, and we've been at that for at least the past six since that. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say six or seven. Maybe almost more. Yeah, we've been at 15. Has it been higher than that? No, that's the highest we've been. We're at historical highs for our total well, police in our town. Then, isn't that right? Well, we are right now, yeah, for, for the past seven years, we haven't hired and put on any additional um, patrolmen until you know, Chief Foley was here. And I'd have to go back and look and see exactly what year it was. At one point in time, we had 15 part time officers on the roster, and we had a lot of money in the part time budget. And he put together a strategic plan, and remember we tried to, we went to put two on every other year. We were going to try and put two officers on. We did that once. We got one round prior to, to the, the fiscal problems that every town was having. So we hired two, and I think from that, at that point, we went from 13 to 15. And like I said, that's well, we cut a lot of the part-time shifts. Yeah. Right. We sure. all but eliminated the part-timers, mm -hmm. but then... You know, over the course of a few years, they were having, we having trouble get get pulling them in too because right. they had full time <coughs> jobs. I mean, right. And we did it for a while. So yeah. we cut that list from 15 part timers, I, th I think, down to like eight. And we hired a couple of off of that list, yeah. full time people. Mm -hmm. But, and then we didn't have as many part timers for a couple of years. And then we realized uh, the part timers really don't cost us that much extra. Mm -hmm because we're not paying for benefits and they're doing the job of uh, full-time officers. So if you can get good people that are part-time, but like Pam said, a lot of times the part-timers have full-time jobs too. They can only do this part-time. Are you finding part-time offices? Um, I didn't say we find them as a problem, it's finding quality ones. Yeah, right, right. So that's why we try to go issue. off of the full-time dispatch yeah. list because we are, we've already had a look at them for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And we've we'll had a look at them for the 40 system. hours a week, so it's a pretty safe bet that, you know, we'd approve of them before hiring somebody without. Yeah, we have a very good work. system in place. We've been very fortunate over the years. What we normally do is we'll start somebody out who's interested in becoming a police officer as a part-time dispatcher, let them work their way up to full-time dispatcher, and then we'll put them on the road part-time. And then when a position opens up, we already have somebody in house who's been working here a year and a half, two years. We've seen them on the road, we've seen them on the desk, and you know, you know that they're quality sure. people and they can step right in. Yeah. So it's worked well for us. I mean, we haven't hired outside since I've been here. I think I was one of the last people that was hired off of a test yeah. back in 1996. Yeah. So we've had a good, good run. Right, thank you. You're Okay, so we're moving to uh, the expense side. We start off with um, the tuition reimbursement. Again, that's a, a contractual item. We've had four officers that are, are still taking classes and going to school. They've indicated that they would most likely be taking classes next fiscal year, so I had to um, budget that amount of money in case they do uh, take their classes and seek reimbursement. Okay, so no, that's con contractual, that, that that's allowed? Do right. we have a cap on the number? Uh, the, it's 3000 per year, and they have to pay for the class, take the class, yeah. pass the class, so get a, a, um, 
a grade above a C, and then they can seek reimbursement. But also, too, prior to the next fiscal year, they have to let me know by December if if they're going to be taking classes so we can budget appropriately. Um, is, it, is yeah. it tuition for whatever they want to take, or does it have to deal with law enforcement? It, it has to be a work-related okay. course, or towards their degree program if they're going mm -hmm. for um, you know, an associate's degree or a criminal mm -hmm. justice degree, if, as long as it's part of the degree program. Moving down to repairs and maintenance, um, this is uh, 36965, and this takes care of our records management system, all the repairs and maintenance that we need to do to the cruiser fleet. Um, any maintenance agreements that we have, we have a maintenance agreement with CGIS, which is our criminal justice information system that we have through the state. Um, our generator, any radio repairs. This is basically anything that needs to be fixed throughout the year or any of the maintenance con contractual agreements we have. Um, for service is taken care of through this line item. Moving on to the uh, police and dispatch training. So we have 15 full-time officers and four part-time dispatchers, uh, four full-time dispatchers, and our part-time dispatchers, all of whom have to have a mandatory 16 hours um, continuing education training to keep their certification, and that's just the dispatchers. Per year? Per year. So that's um, 16 hours a piece, and every full-time police officer has, is, has a mandatory 40 hours of training that they have. And on top of that, we have some specialists. We have accident reconstructionists. We have uh, firearms armorers who have to certify and, and make sure the guns are in working order. We have, um, we have a, one of our guys is on a SWAT team. We have defensive tactics instructors. We have evidence collection technicians. So all of these require continuing education. So I mean that money, it, the twelve six goes quick because some of these classes can be between two fifty and, and five hundred dollars depending on what their recertification is. On on top of that, everybody has to do the forty hours mandatory in service training, which frankly we need to pay for too. We've been doing it online through MPI, which is a lot cheaper, and the guys actually like it. And, you know, it's cheaper for us, but still, um, it's quite an expense. It adds up to the, the and, and, and meanwhile, you're having to backfill their positions while they're taking the course, or no? Well, the, a lot of them, it, they can do it while they're at work, and, and okay. if, if something comes up, they can stop, okay. and, you know, they can go back to where it was. That's, that's the good part about mm -hmm. doing it online. Before, when we used to go through the MPTC, we used to have to take somebody, send them to class for a week right. for 40 hours, and then backfill their shifts. So now we can get away with it, um, with them doing it online. And they can do it at their convenience. And we tell them when it starts, when the programs come out, when they can start it, and give them a time frame to finish it by, and they'll get that in. But then they have to take their specialized courses to keep their certifications, so. Now the certifications and the, the varying types of expertise that you require in your department, are you, are we mandated by any anything to have certain specialties we're not mandated to have them okay but this is for example well, we do a lot of accident reconstruction any serious accidents that we have we have one of our members is a accident reconstructionist mm -hmm. so to keep his actar certification he has to have so many continuing education um you know points and, and training hours and certifications to have that we're not mandated to have any specialists but Anytime you go to court, anytime you you know collect evidence, um, you need to have some certification and training to, to back that up. So right. if we're going to have somebody collect evidence, I'm going to make sure that they're properly trained in, to do that. So where I'm headed is where everybody's headed these days, and that's a, a discussion about regionalization mm -hmm. of things. And I, I, is there any way that or have, has your police talked about regionalizing and having specialists? In the area, in, in, in right, southern, yeah, southern Blackstone Valley, yeah, southern we have the, the semi like Central, Mer um, Central Mass uh -huh. um, Law Enforcement Council. Okay. So we do the Semlec team has a, uh, an accident reconstruction team. Yeah. We have a, a SWAT team. We have yeah. members of our department that are actually on those teams. Right. So when we have a serious motor vehicle accident, whether there's a fatal or serious personal injury accident, mm -hmm. we do. We our officer works with the Semlec regional team that comes in. Okay. Um, but we do have resources. Um, okay. Like that, and we are regionalizing. 
Okay. I, I just didn't know whether or not there was any more room for, for that. Yeah. So that, but I, you, you're, you're doing it to some extent, so. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yep. Um, so the next line item is our telephone. That just covers all our landline expenses for the police station down, uh, downstairs. Um, our postage <coughs> is very limited. Um, this is the next line I'm going to add $100. Our cellular service, that covers um, all of our air cards for the mobile data terminals in the cars. So the cars have mobile computers. Um, so that covers that and um, the cell phones. Do you guys shop around for cell service? Um, right now we're with Verizon. But uh, Mr. Wojcik just sent us um, some information today that the state's working on a new contract with um, cell dealers, so we're going to have to look at that, take a look at that. But right now we're with Verizon, we've been with them for years, so um, it's the best coverage. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I think we've looked at the other ones. Everybody's uh, nodding their head. The network started, is key. So yeah. That's yeah. it. When you're the police department, you need yeah, to right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. That's when you don't yeah. want to fail. Um, moving on to other services, um, that basically takes care of some station maintenances and some, um, every now and then we'll have to get the, uh, the cruisers and cells decontaminated for one reason or another. Um, if we hire somebody, we send them for a medical or uh, psychological exam um, and some cleaning services for the station. So that is what that might be. Office supplies, <coughs> self-explanatory. A lot of our, it, it might seem a little bit high, but we print a ton of things, as you can see. We, we go through a lot of paper and a lot of ink. So, and the, and so the you want donations? Well, <laughs> well you know, thank you for this. We we'll pay you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Hence the black and white copies. Right. Yes. Laser, so. printer. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, so those cartridges are yeah. expensive. They're very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, Building maintenance, uh, miscellaneous items around the station that we take care of, that's uh, 750. Custodial supplies, paper towels, uh, cleaning supplies for the station again, um, 810. Our vehicle supplies, uh, that's cleaning supplies for all the cruisers and the tires. Um, so every year we buy a couple of sets of tires for each cruiser, winter, and um, we change the rubber in the spring to make sure that we have uh, good rubber on the ground. Um, the gasoline, which is the next line item, we kept the same um, amount. We we're averaging, we're uh, budgeting for the same amount of gallons. Again, looking back at the trend, we do about fourteen thousand five hundred <coughs> gallons. Um, the price dropped right. a little bit, and we have reason to believe that it's going to stay relatively the same mm -hmm. so we we didn't do anything with that line of that that's staying the same as it was last year our food expenses uh that takes care of anytime we have a prisoner we're required to feed them feed them so if we have to uh get prisoner meals that's what that's for and also this contractual agreement if, if the officers go to training they're eligible for the person <coughs> uh, up to ten dollars a day and um, if somebody goes to the academy while they're in the academy, we're required to pay for their meals if they're required to stay there. So that $2,000 um, uh, <coughs> historically has been enough to get out of year. Next line item is for books and periodicals, which is basically law books that and updates that we buy uh, each year. If something comes out, we have subscriptions to a couple of, um, with a couple of companies where we get the legal updates relatively quickly uh, as soon as they come out and we also get the yearly updates uh, on the books. The other supplies, um, basically medical supplies, evidence supplies, any equipment we need if someone goes to the academy, ammunition for our qualifications, uh, which we have to qualify 21 officers uh, two times a year. Uh, we like to go three because we try and do a, a low light night shoot as well. We have uh, a couple of pretty good firearms instructors and they like to get out there as much as we can, but uh, the cost of ammunition adds up quickly. Um, so that's why that's at 10605. In state travel. Is there any regionalization with this with other departments? With the SWAT team, there is not necessary. Regardless of what we do for training mm -hmm. regionally, we still have to pro provide our own ammo. 
um, ammunition. Like we can, we we train with other departments, mm -hmm. and we go to the range with other departments. And no, I'm talking working with 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 other departments again. Could you do a bulk a bulk purchase? Oh, um, well, we're on this. We we buy off of the state contract. Okay, so you're yeah, getting it's, it's probably, already yeah. I know the price has gone up. Triple A out of uh, Dedham is the lowest price, and we get it off the state contract. Yeah. So. Um, same with the tires. It's, it's the same yeah. thing. It's, you know, you go to state yeah. bid and they establish a price. And they, if you buy two or two hundred, it's still the same price. So, so our in-state travel, that's basically for when the guys go to court. They have to go to Worcester Court um, and so they have to pay for parking, so they get reimbursed. <coughs> um, that takes care of that. Uh, the training travel is very limited. Um, because if we have a crew, if someone's going going to training, we don't pay mileage. Uh, most times they can take a cruiser or one of the uh, unmarked cars that we have. So that that doesn't cost us a lot, but we we keep that in there just in case uh, one of the dispatchers has to travel, and uh, we have to pay them for mileage. Out of state travel, same thing. That's very limited. That would be if we have to go out of state and stay over for transport of a prisoner or for an investigation or something to that effect. But uh, that's budgeted at $250. Our dues and memberships, that is a, uh, a lot of contractual agreements as well. Um, there's a uh, health and wellness reimbursement in there for 15 officers. Um, fees for our association fees, um, the SEMLEC fees, the uh, Blackstone Valley Drug Task Force, the uh, Mass Police Accreditation. Um, all of those association with all of those organizations have uh, membership fees that we're required to pay, so that's up to eleven thousand eight one five. Additional equipment. Uh, these are things that we we try to replace every year, uh, like every couple of years, or every year I try to put, replace at least two computers. Um, the computers are running down there twenty four seven, especially in dispatch. Um, you know, things come up, things happen. Hard drives go, power supplies go. So uh, anything that we need to replace of the existing equipment comes out of that line item. Uh, replace equipment, that, again, that's a contractual item. If, if something gets ruined on duty, if, if you know something gets damaged, a uh, guy's making an arrest and their uniform gets torn apart or something like that, but uh, very limited in that line item. So the total for um, all of the expenses <coughs> One five three eight zero eleven, uh, and that's like all. Ten percent of your salary budget. Right. Correct. So moving on to the last uh, component is the cruisers, and I'm going to let the lieutenant talk a little bit about this because we changed this a little bit from our original submission last year, um, just because the Ford's coming out with a new. Um, vehicle, but the lieutenant give you a little bit. In, uh, yeah, for this year we were allowed to get two new cars, uh, which we did. We were given $79,500, um, and actually, we, as, as, as close as I could get it, we were still over that amount, but we had extra money um, that we were able to use to make the purchases. Yeah, thanks to the thanks to our finance director, is that what we said? Well, I don't, I don't know exactly how we pulled it off, but we, we got through it okay. Any drugs on us? So she's not. Yeah. <laughs> so um, then um, Ford is coming out with a new production year of 2020. They had a very limited model year of 2019. So in other words, we had to order the cars before um, November of this past year. I put my name on two of them because they're going to be a hard item to get. Um, and just about the time that happened, we had one of our cruisers, one of our line cars, get totaled. That got replaced. So now, as opposed to having two of the uh, new cars, we now have three of them, with three remaining that need to be replaced. Now, our original plan was to replace two, and then you know two the next year. But <coughs> obviously, we don't need to do that. So, as opposed to going with just the two cars, uh, my recommendation would be that we we go ahead and try to get the two 2019s that we they've already are holding for us tentatively and try to get our hands on a 2018 leftover and just do the three replacements this year. And then we won't need cruisers probably until fiscal 2024 or so. so um, and part of the reason is the newer cruisers 
don't have the same uh, package. So the, the equipment that we have in our current cars, albeit they look the same, the, as these 2020s are now a hybrid, and the equipment from our cruisers now will not transfer into these, <coughs> these newer cars. So um, in the two, car two of the cars we bought this, this year, one of them was a, was a new build, and the other one was a replacement of, of another car because we went from a, a sedan to an SUV and nothing would transfer. And, and the, well, going from an SUV to an SUV, everything transferred, and it, it was a savings of a little over $3,000 per cruiser. So our plan would be to try to get, just get three cars this year, the equipment will transfer over, we'll save roughly $3,000 per car, and not have to deal with, and I, I know Ford does their homework and they're, they're a credible company, but the hybrid's the first model year. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, I'd rather have them work out the bugs for this mm -hmm. car over the course of the next several years and hopefully by 2024 <coughs> everything's squared away and we won't be having cars that are sitting in or know, they're not the making that show. model anymore one or the other yeah you know. so i mean at least this way we'd be able to transfer the equipment that we currently have into these cars and i said saving you know that much money per car and just getting it all done in one year mm -hmm. and now the town we don't have to come back looking for cars mm -hmm. for Another four, four, four years. Four years. And, we'll and we have insur maybe. insurance money coming for that uh, total. <coughs> That's already taken That's care of. Okay. It's already been paid for, and uh, okay. that one's all set. So well, I'm just looking at money. Right. <laughs> yeah, actually, that one um, we did okay with that one. The car was um, we were able to you know put that together for you know a little more than what the insurance company gave us, but okay. we, we were pretty lucky with that. Um, were you able to use any of the equipment out of it, or was that all gone too? We were able to use some of the stuff yeah. out of it. A lot of the stuff inside the car, such as like you know the console mm -hmm. and, and the, the cage for the prisoner. We have our transport system, which is you know the plastic back seat with the you know with the uh, our retrieval the seat belts are on backwards, so you can reach over and buckle the person in. Um, so things like that are where the cost comes in, because now if we wait till 2020 to get these cars, not only do I believe the cost of the car is going to be more. They are heavier. I don't know um, what they're going to offer for a warranty, so or how much that warranty is going to cost. Right now, we buy the hundred thousand mile warranty with these cars, and that's been consistent for the past since probably 2013. Um, proof positive. One of the cars uh, just got the last month, yeah. ninety-four thousand miles on it, and Ford put a brand new motor in it. So. Okay. <laughs> We were yeah. fortunate with that we get that warranty. I don't know with the hybrid how that's going to pan out. Um, I'd rather not be a, a um, I know that they did have test pilots per se, but I would I would just assume it's better with what you know. Mm -hmm. So at yeah. the cost of one more car above what we had originally planned, I just think it makes more sense to, you know, just stay with what we have and then let them figure out what goes on from and there. And again, that puts us... Next year, I mean, we're in a five-year budget, we had two budgeted for next year. So, buying this one extra one this year is going to decrease our budget. What our projection was for next year by the, the eighty thousand. Yeah, this um, is something that you, you can't look at it on at, for one year. You look at it over, you know, the period of time. Right. And the and issue too, the, 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 <laughs> our, another one of our concerns too is, is again, Ford vehicles for police are, are great, but when they first, even when they came out with these um, utility interceptors. I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, there was the we had to send them all back for the recall because of the uh, carbon monoxide that was leaking <laughs> inside. So they had to change, the, you know, the tailpipes. It, it was minor things, but there's my guess is there's going to be some issues with these new hybrids that are that are coming out. And again, with the equipment that we have and the ones now, we can do the easier transfer. So we think it's a smart move, and that's what we're proposing. So we have six cars total. Six total cars. Now, are you running into anything with these cruises on the Screen Communities Act that we have to, they have to meet certain specifications or anything? No, well, we haven't yet. We haven't no. Yet. Okay. Because they they have to you know pass the emissions and right. uh, there was a, uh, again with the ones that we have they were all they all went through the recall for the uh, carbon monoxide and the emissions problems and they changed the pipes on all of them. So. And then these are also um, controlled by a state bid, so in other words, yeah. the, you know, the price is, you know, you know, out for the departments that buy these cars. The only difference is how you accessorize them, and like, like I said, we do, we, we spend the extra money on that 100,000 mile warranty, which in this case obviously paid off, so. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're proposing for the cruiser line item at that third cruiser, which would be uh, $122,500, and that would get us the three cruises, and again, the 
If all goes as planned, you won't hear from us again talking about cruises till 2024 because we'll be back on the two, two, and two plan. Right. And the only reason we're straying from that is, is like the lieutenant said, we got the two, that mm -hmm. other one got totaled, we got to replace it, and now we're finding ourselves in this position yeah. where it'd be a good time to have it. Mm -hmm. So, all together, um, our salaries, expenses, and the request for the cruises totals out to 1,859,862, um, which is a total of about 6% higher than last year. Mm -hmm. but th that's because you had that $43,000 in for that, that third cruiser. Yeah. You know, had it not been for that addition of the cruiser, it would be about right around 3.5% increase that we're asking for. Yeah, your salaries are 3%, mm -hmm. and salaries are 85% of your budget. But the overall is almost 6 because of that. Cruiser. Right, because of that cruiser. If you take that, if you take that one $43,000 cruiser out, it's right around 3 point. We would have been right around 3.5. But again, I'm also looking at the following year now where that's going to... Go to zero, gonna, right? You know, you're going down to zero for yeah, the next three for years, years so. when it comes to cruisers. We're going to hold you to the budget next year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chief, as you get a third car... And that third car is replacing the last car that would have been replaced. Are you getting something back on, if you will, the trade-in because it's a year younger than it was anticipated <coughs> to be? We would get something on the trade. However, that one that just um, got the new engine, uh, we're going to transfer that equipment out on, on one of them. And we're probably going to keep that car for a court car or a, a training car. I mean, that, you know, okay. that's a car. It's got a brand new engine in it. A lot of years on it. it it's, it's got a lot of years on it, but also that's yeah. something that we can use for when the guys right. go to court, so we're not yeah. paying for that. It's an extra car, and it doesn't take a car out of, the, out of the cycle. And even again, it would still have lights and the radio in it, so <coughs> if, if a car goes down and we're down a car that has to be repaired, we can still throw that one And for there. details, too, like when... Uh, Okay. The National Grid or Charter or whatever requests a cruiser for detail, we'll have that. Oh. We won't have a regular line car that we're going to okay. take out of service. We'll right. have something on the ready mm -hmm. for that type of thing. Okay. So. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions, members, for the chief? I have one question. The dispatches, do they dispatch for the fire department also or just for the police department? Yeah, police, fire, and EMS. Okay. Now did and even highways, <coughs> they need it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do, do, do the fire department, did they pay part of the salary at all? Or? No, it all comes it out. All, comes all out the dispatches police. are all out of the police budget. <coughs> okay. I mean, it's all coming out of the same pocket yeah. anyway. Right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's been all that way. Out of your yeah. Well, that's whose pocket <laughs> I was thinking of. <laughs> okay, great. Thank, Thank you very much. much. One, one thing to add. Just one thing. Follow up on the question. Uh, during the contract negotiation, there was a policy discussion about the first year salary change. So what you're looking at with the budget for this department is this first year was a 2.25 polo. The out years would be 1.75, which is really quite low compared to the rest of the state. There was a wage comparison study done at the beginning of the negotiation. And it was a feeling on both sides of the table that that first year bump was necessary to keep our, our police force competitive with neighboring towns. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, with a with a new step and a 2.25, you see that little bump this year in compensation. But it'll be very flat for the next two for fiscal 20 and 21. And everybody's happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you both. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Hey, everybody. Thank you. 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 Yes, that was ratified by town meeting last time. Okay. Oh, good. There. I thought I saw that. Okay, so next on our agenda is the school department. I've uh, got Superintendent Maines and Brett Argo, the chairman of the school committee. <coughs> An old, familiar face. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Good to see you, Brett. Thank you very much for 
having us. Ours is a little bit different. We're not, it's not a budget presentation. It's more right. of a, an overview. Um, but before we begin, I, I just want to introduce that we do have all of our administrators here. So Thank John you. Bell, he is our uh, elementary school principal, new to the district. Mrs. Sosha, who is our primary school uh, principal. This is Urquhart, who is our assistant superintendent of student support services. Josh Romano, who is the high school principal. Um, Lauren Nasuti, who is our chairperson for special education and also our ELL coordinator. And uh, Brian Delaney, who is our middle school principal. So I just wanted to introduce everybody. I cut down the numbers of schools because I'm not remembering these people. Well, I've never seen schools, them before. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Mr. Means, like thank you for letters. that. Thank you all for coming. I yep. appreciate this. <laughs> Some yeah. of the well, faces are unfamiliar. It's really nice. Great. Yeah. It's great. Um, and, and we asked them to, to join us uh, because they are an integral part of what we've put together for you to, to consider because obviously they're responsible for their buildings or for, mm -hmm. in Neely and in Laura's case, their departments. Um, so um, I did put together some stuff for the, for the board. Um, if you, I, I don't know if everybody had an opportunity to take a look at the document that Brett sent out. Did you send um, it out? Well, I sent to your pen. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I briefly had a chance okay. to look at it, but not, not a lot. Okay, thank okay. you. But this is this is the yeah. co this is a copy of that. I mean, it's, it's Good, so that'll be helpful. Yeah. You know what? Can I just ask the finance committee to yeah. introduce yeah. yourselves so that this, yeah. uh, this couple we've got some idea. new members yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Lynn Mazzoli. I'm part of the finance committee. Dick Vandenberg. Michael Hutner. Good evening, Howard D'Amico. Thank you. I'm Pam Holmes. Good morning, Carol Gogolinski. Uh, and I'm Fred Argo for new folks here. Um, I used to be part of the finance committee uh, a couple of years ago. I moved over to the school committee. Fred was the chair of the school committee. We're going to say you graduated? No, no, no. Oh, I wouldn't say graduated. Just Lateral just moves. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, probably easier to work with. That was the, that was the, the yeah. full document, but that's, that'll be just probably a little easier to work at. Um, and we appreciate the opportunity to come and speak uh, with you. I think last year I, th I thought it proved to be very helpful to really sort of lay out, you know, what the, the district was doing with regards to uh, academics and programs and so on and so forth. And so this would be a continuation of that. So we uh, welcome the opportunity to meet with you. Um, um, Going to try to be as succinct as possible. Uh, if I can, it's very difficult to talk about students from age three to age 22 and, and uh, with all taking different programs and courses, but I will try to be as deliberate it, 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 as I possibly can. Um, so for those who might be new, go ahead. I was gonna say, um, just, so Kevin's got a lot of, I think, great information about what's gone on since we last saw you guys last budget season and plans for going forward. Um, I know there's some new folks here. I wasn't sure if you want to spend, me to spend five minutes just talking maybe some history and kind of what's gotten to this point, That'd or do you want to do that? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, good. I think overall the district is, is, in a, is in a good place right now. We haven't always been there um, until recently. Um, you look at our, um, our budgets from FY08 through FY14, we ranked bottom three in the state on a cost per pupil basis. Um, every single one of those years. Um, FY, since then, I think we've, we've reached 31st <coughs> lowest in the state out of 320 reporting districts. So we're talking, you know, bottom 1% in those first few years. Now we're, we're bottom 9% now right. as of FY17. Um, and I think, you know, once, once FY18 is reported, we might be up to 38th lowest in the state um, based on some of the additions we made last year. But we're still, you know, that, that bottom 10% in the state for the cost of student. Um, what that led to was, you know, frequent cuts in our in our staffing and our programs. Things we cut one year, maybe added back the next year. A lot of ups and downs with our budget over the years. Really bottoming out in FY16. Um, really got to the point where we had class sizes becoming um, really counterproductive. Um, we lost our athletics completely, if not for the grace of our athletic boosters who came up with $100,000 to keep our athletic programs around. Would have lost band completely, um, again, if not for our boosters. Um, we did lose our um, dean of students um, at the middle school, which I think led to um, some culture issues and discipline issues there, um, and just really just a, a cloud over the district, you know, in, in 16. And that's when you really started seeing some of those those negative trends in students choicing out, going to BBT, higher numbers going to BBT, going to Norfolk Aggie. Um, then we really started to stabilize in 17, but we didn't have to make any cuts. 
we were able to keep athletics around and, and lower the fees on those. Um, FY18 last year, got the classroom sizes back to manageable sizes. Um, added back our dean of students, even though it's being shared between middle school and elementary school rather than just being at the uh, middle school, which I think is working out great for both schools at this point. Um, and that kind of led to, I think, what, what Kevin's going to talk about there. So any, any questions on that? Is that, is that familiar to, to you folks? Or no? I know that for, for you guys that have been here, <laughs> but um, for the rest of you, I'm not sure if you guys were familiar with, kind of with, with that story for us. I mean, it's a lazy background. Thank so. you. Okay. <laughs> So uh, as Brett was talking, the 17-18 year was, was the year, and I, and I think everybody rem that was in the town remembers that the school committee had made a conscious decision that they were going to take dig deeper into school choice, circuit breaker, anything that they could to keep some stability. <coughs> Basically, no cuts in staffing, no cuts in programs. Um, and that was the 17-18 year, and then this year we've, so the focus point, the focal point, uh, I guess, is was stability, which to be honest with you, I think was probably having the biggest detrimental impact on our school choice numbers, our vocational numbers, was that there was a, a, a sense of lack of stability in, in what we were offering. Um, we heard from the, the your board as well as the, the board of selectmen, um, uh, what are we doing to, to keep the district as competitive as possible with those in, in, the, in the valley? And I will share with you a little bit later on, I'll, I'll pass this around, but just some information that Mr. Romano put together for us, which will show you what other people are doing, what we're doing, and what we're looking to add so that we remain competitive with them. Um, again, crucial to that competitiveness is can we remain stable? Can we keep our staffing? And can we, in a, in a tactical and a strategic way, add some new positions that cover a lot of a lot of ground for us? And I'll try to explain those to you as we go forward. So we came forward last year with a plan that was really a three-year, four-year plan um, to move the district forward, which was that um, to try to add some programs, add some academics, add some um, opportunities that students did not have because they had been taken away. And the reason why, besides their knowledge base, but they also have had an integral part, the administrative team. Uh, we have worked on this extremely collaboratively, and we have taken everything that we've talked about and everything that's in here that you're going to hear has been a, a broad-based look from grade age three to age 22, and making sure that we're addressing all of those issues rather than just, okay, a little bit here, a little bit there. Let, let's look at the, at the larger picture. Uh, very systematic, and the plan was to, was to build on it, the scaffold it. And so, um, as, as Brett mentioned, in 1718, we stayed stable. That was, a, that was a godsend to the district. Last year, if you look on the, uh, the page, we, we did add some positions. I believe it's the third or fourth page. Um, with the approval of the town referendum, as well as additional funding from uh, School Choice, Circuit Breaker, and other sources, we were able to add some positions. So referendum, you're talking the override. Override, yes. Let's call it override. Okay, override. People I mean, you know, give them credit. Okay. They, yep. they voted oh, absolutely. for an override. Yeah. We, if, if, if without it, we were over the cliff. There's mm -hmm. no question. Yeah. As, yeah. as a school district, we were over the cliff. So, and I, I acknowledge the, the, uh, the town at the opening day. Um, so thank yeah. them very much. Yeah. Uh, in, front of the, in front of the commissioner of education, by the way, as well. He was there, and I, and I let him know that the town had approved it and, and so forth. So we added, uh, for, the, for the, this year, uh, an adjustment counselor at the high school, um, an adjustment council you can see at the elementary school. Uh, that elementary school position was a part-time position, shared between two buildings. Basically what we did is we made that person a full-time person dedicated to the elementary school. The primary school now has a, a, a full-time person as well. At the middle school, we had three part-time teachers. Uh, there was a, a .5 PE teacher, a .5 art teacher, and a .5 band teacher. Um, we added, we made those positions 1.0, so we added 0.5 to their teaching assignment. So now, for the first time, students at Douglas Middle School are receiving health instruction, which is, to me, somewhat mind-boggling that we never had health, but now they do have a, a plan to have health instruction, and they are doing health grades 6, 7, and 8. Um, same thing with digital, we added, the art teacher became an art teacher and a digital design teacher. So we had these wonderful Air 2s, it, MacBook, MacBook Airs, MacBook Airs that, that were capable of doing digital design but were not being used because there was no one to teach it. Mm -hmm. So now they're using them, they're creating all kinds of wonderful uh, programs and they're doing green screen uh, activities and really expanded and it's really, it's really taken off. 
and uh, we added a 0.5 band position, so that that position became a full-time position, which Brett mentioned a minute ago. Our band program, for those who've been around, was on the brink of extinction. I mean, it was clearly, and I know it was a great source of pride within the community for many, many years, sure. but we had lost um, funding and, 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 and numbers had started to dwindle. Uh, we had cut band in the, in the classroom, so therefore, what's the chances of you being in the marching band if you don't have band in the school? So that was, that was the downside. Um, at the high school, we had a .6 librarian by adding just a .4, making her full-time. Uh, she has come on board and is covering uh, uh, not only some classes, but she's also uh, covering as a program that Mr. Romano created called an Academic S Support Center. I'll talk about that in just a second. And we returned the, the clerk uh, to the district, uh, .8 clerk, and that clerk is going between both buildings. So she spends part of the day in the elementary, um, in the uh, middle school first, and then she goes to the elementary school has paid huge dividends with regards to customer service because before you only had one person anchored to a desk trying to do everything. So at the um, primary school, the next page, at the primary school, as I said, they, the, the adjustment council became full-time. She is going into classrooms. She's teaching lessons now. Before she could never have done that on social thinking, social and emotional well-being. She's starting at grade, at, at pre-K, they're getting that instruction. She's doing lunch groups. She's also part of our crisis management. She also was our liaison to DCF, to families. Um, so it paid a huge dividend. She also publishes a, a monthly newsletter that goes home to parents as well, which again, she never would have been able to do. The next page is the elementary school. As, as I mentioned to you, we added a 1.0 adjustment counselor. That was a, that was a part-time position. Now it's a full-time position. Basically does the same thing that, that the high school does. So this will be a little bit repetitive. I'll go quickly, but Student support, social emotional needs, the social thinking curriculum, lunch groups, uh, integral part of the 504 and the IEP process, um, supports the students in the classroom, liaison to DCF, family continuity, and to families, works in collaboration with the dean of students dealing with any kind of disciplinary issues, attendance issues, uh, uh, social emotional issues. So that is a huge dividend for a 0.4 increase that we, that we received. Um, we added music lessons back. We brought music lessons back to the elementary school. They, they were a victim of the cuts. So right now we have music lessons. It was originally music lessons for just grade five. Now it's grade four and five. Um, and I'm happy to say that there are 64 students participating in the music lessons, which they were not able to participate in because we just didn't have music lessons. Um, and, and we still also have the choral program which is also at night for lessons. So we have a, now we have a band choral program. They will do some presentations at the end of the year for parents, but they're getting the opportunity to get the arts early, which had been cut. And that's the feeder system for everything that we want to do. And again, the clerk is there point four again, relative to customer service. I mentioned already the health position at the middle school, um, finally <coughs> offering a health curriculum, uh, the digital design I mentioned as well, and the band chorus, the band, has seen a 300% increase in particip participation, a 600% increase in our choral program. So just in those two schools alone, you're seeing tremendous, and, and that is by simply adding a 0.5, not a full-time, but a 0.5 to what was already there. And again, the clerk, as I mentioned, is in that building at point four. <coughs> then last year at the high school, um, having been the principal at the high school for eight years, um, <coughs> Desperate for a, stu a school adjustment counselor. Never, never was able to get it. With the, with the funding this year, we did add a school adjustment counselor to the high school. Um, we're halfway through the school year, and she has already been intimately involved in nearly 20 significant safety or well-being concerns, and she becomes our liaison, our conduit to DCF, our conduit to family continuity services, to families, to arranging meetings and so forth. Um, just been a, a huge uh, investment. It also allows our guidance counselors to get into classrooms and to teach lessons on, on, in, in, in the guidance curriculum, which they never were able to do because they were triaging anybody who had any kind of an issue. Um, I mentioned to you about the point four librarian position that was an increase, the academic support center. This is academic interventions for students who are not receiving special education services. So if you're struggling in math, science, English, history, there's a place for you to go now. You may not get, you don't get special education services. There's somewhere to go, and she is assisting them and providing them with supports. 
Um, she also um, is, is managing the library and um, the high school last year had its NEASC assessment done. Um, we had previously, we had eliminated the um, librarian's position. We had reduced it, reduced it, reduced it, eliminated it. And it is a mandatory state requirement and actually a NEASC requirement that you have a librarian. But it was either a librarian or, or, or a classroom teacher. That, those are the decisions that we made. A lot of interesting things are going on. We've added robotics at the high school. Uh, we've added <coughs> we've placed some of our advanced placement textbooks because the textbooks might be 10, 12 years old. The tests have changed. They've been modified. They've been adjusted. So we've finally been able to replace some of those. Uh, Mr. Romano is introducing academic pathways. So on your transcript, if you have an interest in, say, business, and you've taken personal finance, entrepreneurship, marketing, um, you're going to have, and, and I forget what the fourth one is, but there's a fourth one, so that when you apply to a Brandeis, a Babson, a Bentley, or some, something along those lines, you have <coughs> an up, a leg up on others because you had those core entry-level courses that makes you more competitive with the, with the other students. Those pathways are going to go across the spectrum. Eventually, they're going to end up in not just business and there's a, global, there's a global pathway in place right now, but they'll be in English, they'll be in history, and so forth. Um, all of that is going to mean that you've specialized, you are well versed in that area, it makes you more competitive when you apply for college. And then the last thing is that we, um, last year if you recall I came and we were, Brett and I and, and even uh, Matt had been part of this process of looking in with Education Alliance about trying to uh, innovation pathways and bringing in some technology and, 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 and engineering to the district. Uh, we're no longer working with them, but we did get a lot of great information from them. and. Um, one of the things that became very evident was offering our high school students opportunities to, while they're in high school, earn college credits. It's called an early college program. Uh, Josh is in the process of finalizing a cohort agreement with Northbridge and Uxbridge and Quinn Sigamon. Well, that will allow our students to take up to four courses through Quinn Sigamon, a reduced rate, that will allow them to actually literally have, by the time they graduate, their first semester of college completed in this early college pathway program and we're looking to expand that um, and I'll talk about that as we go forward. Um, in special education, um, prior to going into the start of the school year, we had to add a, a 1.0 special education inclusion teacher who is, provides educational supports, emotional, social emotional supports, does data collection, does testing, assessments. The reason was that the increase in, in, in numbers, uh, to, in order like Brett would talk about, for a better caseload we added that other position to give better caseload, better service for the kids who have special education needs. In November this year, we had to add a 1.0 um, severe special needs teacher at the elementary school. Uh, population within the, the classroom because of some move-ins and had, had become too large and it was really becoming difficult to manage. We added that one position during the course of the year. We have had to add some ABAs, uh, students who have moved in, their IEPs when they moved into the district said, I have a one-to-one -one ABA, therefore we're, com we're obligated to provide that. Could not have anticipated that. This is what, this is what happens. Um, we have had four students who have been, gone out on extended evaluations. That also impacts us, the, well, the town specifically on transportation. Um, we had an unanticipated placement. We have one student has gone out of the district uh, and that also includes, because it's a day student, it includes transportation as well. Could not have anticipated that, but you have to respond to it. So that was um, the special education piece of it. Uh, the next page is the district. Um, safety planning, I wanted to report to you that um, we've had an ongoing full year process involving uh, administrators from the, the school department uh, the <coughs> chief of police who was just here, the, the fire chief is involved, our sc school resource officer is involved, our school facilities person is involved, DPW is involved, as is um, our business and operations manager is involved, and they are literally creating a new safety plan for the schools. Um, and we've done a lot of work around that uh, in, in, in safety training and so on and so forth. Um, we did provide professional development for every student, every staff member, cafeteria, bus drivers. Uh, everybody was trained in the safety protocols that we've implemented. Two years ago, we did active drills during the course of the year, supported by state police and local police agencies uh, at all buildings, all age levels. 
all age levels, all the way down to pre preschool. So for safety purposes, it's, uh, it's, it's sad that we have to do that, but we do have to do that. And then lastly, uh, we made the commitment during the school year to purchase the safety buckets. The safety buckets are in every classroom, every closet, every office. And in it is uh, things like tourniquets and, and Band-Aids and rubber gloves and um, um, items for, for diabetics, candy bars or, or, or that type of stuff. Uh, every, it actually, to be honest with you, it even, has, it even serves as a toilet. Just to add bucket. that too, um, through the Capital Improvements Committee, we've also added some additional cameras in the high mm -hmm. school. Um, and key, uh, we're working on key card doors, right, at the primary school updating We those? have the key cards, okay. but we're working on keying the whole building. Okay. Yeah, key. So right. some additional safety things beyond our, our, our sure. general fund budget and kind of Capital Improvements Committee as well. We also did key card uh, down at the parking lot at the middle school now. Yeah. Right. They had to walk up the hill, there's a, there's a key card entrance down at the bottom, so it's a little bit of a cost. A lot of people are very happy about that, that yeah. looking a little bit. Actually, especially yeah. when the teachers come in, they, they always have three or four bags that they carry. In yeah. So that's all that happened last year during the school year. It's all in place now. It's all things that we're doing right now. Do you want to pause there? Any questions on any, any of that? Yeah, I have one. Okay, um, sure. So, for instance, if you look at um, some of the special, the special ed stuff, for instance. Yep. How much of that are we doing because we feel we need to, and how much are we doing because the state tells us we have? To? We're mandated. We're mandated. So, student. So, for example, a student moves into the district and has an IEP and has special services that they require. We're we're mandated. You must cover those, and you must cover them immediately, as quickly as possible. So, you there's no option in in, in uh, you can't opt out of that at any point. Mr. Means, can yes. I also interject? Sure. Um, just one addition to that. So anytime a student moves in, like Mr. Mason, we're absolutely mandated. So if a student comes with an IEP that has a particular service or a service provider, we have to provide it. What we also do is we provide our own formal assessments. So through that, you know, it, it's, it's really a combination of observation within the classroom, observation within different therapeutic areas, and then we have um, our staff they administer um, psychological testing, academic testing. If need be, if we have a student that, let's say, has a vision impairment, hearing impairment, something of, of that realm, um, where we don't have the staff at this time that, that covers that, we will contract out to satisfy that assessment. And that's how we really, really gather the information to create the, I, the Douglas IEP that satisfies the student's needs. And then, if we can omit something, we will most often we can are these so. kind of like unfunded mandates though i mean the state makes you do them but they don't give you the money for it right? correct yeah i'd right. say special education is you know, grossly un Huge. underfunded at the state level the you know there's a circuit breaker reimbursement that we get um you do get a but it hasn't been funded even at the, uh, at the what the state is as many they, they funded at mm -hmm. um and even then you know it's only funded at a, at a certain percent and um when they calculate the, the foundation budget the the growth factor that they you know um, set for special education services back in '93 when that started was, was way under what <coughs> you know, we actually saw special education services grow out over the years. So um, special education from a state perspective, yeah, there's lots of mandates there, but yeah, the, the money hasn't really followed. Um, and I, I don't mean to pick on special ed per yeah. se, but how much are we supposed to do that the state tells us? But by the way, you guys have to come up with the money yourself. Is that yeah. throughout the budget or? Is yes. special ed kind of a special example of that? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, yeah, I, I think well, from a mandate mandate, perspective, right? I, I think there's probably more mandates that fall on special education than you know most yes. other areas. Well, there's, I mean, there's mandates for all academic yeah. areas. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, in other words, if if you're not able to meet the needs mm -hmm. for graduation uh, in in uh, history, for for example, at the high school, because you don't have enough staffing, then you technically should not be able to graduate that student because you haven't met. You haven't been able to provide them with the services they need to graduate because you've had to make but cuts. I think the special education means are probably the ones no that have increased the most over the, like, the last right. dozen years. Right. Um, there is a the, there's the new mandate around um, um, restraint. 
No, 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 no I'm thinking regular Yelp. education. Um, history and, and um, oh, I do history, um, civics. Civics, thank you, civics. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, Social so studies. That, 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 there's, a, there's a, 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 now we were already kind of covered there, but there's a new mandate from the state or, around civics um, curriculum in, in schools. Um, but and again, there was no funding that really followed it. Um, but and it, there's been know. changes in other yeah. departments, the science department, where you needed to all of a sudden need to go out and change your curriculum. It wasn't earth science, it now became environmental science. Right. Therefore, the earth science textbook doesn't work, so you need to go buy some environmental. So it, it happens across the whole yeah. spectrum. Yeah. To your point, though, the Massachusetts Association of Superintendents has petitioned the, the, the state for um, a, a change <coughs> in the structure of circuit breaker re refunding. They also have asking for reimbursement on transportation for special education, which is just as expensive as the Regional. replacements. Just as yeah. expensive. Um, so there is a there is a, a push across the entire state for a, a, a review and a revision of the funding process now, because, and I'll show you some information in just a, in just a bit that will uh, that will speak to, it'll give you a, a clearer picture of just how every district in the area is dealing dealing with these these same issues, um, and and um, the, the other piece of it is and and, and, and as as an educator. Our, our, our mindset is that we want our students to stay in district as, as long as we possibly can, and, and therefore it is incumbent upon us to provide them with the best services that we can to help them to be successful um, uh, going forward. And so that's where you get the mandates, and that's where the, the, the funding issue. And that's why, for example, you saw that there were two positions that, we, that we've filled this year. Um, th that's because we just realized that what we had in place to try to keep it under um, effectively managed just wasn't working. And so at that point, you've got to make a decision. Are we going to add a position to ensure that we're providing the services that those students need, or are we not? And, and our, you know, our option is to provide the best services that we possibly can to all students. This might be a question that others find silly, but you mentioned ages 3 to 22. Correct. So 3 is Preschool. before you start. Yeah preschool kindergarten but yeah. 22 so students on special education mm -hmm. are uh, covered up until the age of 22 okay so not until graduation okay so those who are in the special education right. program might take them longer to achieve correct the uh, okay. so for example um, vocational mm -hmm. training that mm -hmm. might be part of their education from 18 to 22 mm -hmm. so that they are you know able to deal with domestics and maybe uh, hold down a job and, 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 and navigate things and so forth Okay. Doing a good job, Neil. You're doing a fantastic okay. job. <laughs> so uh, that's another piece of it that that we're obligated to provide, mm -hmm. and every school district in the state provides that that service. Excuse me. Is it not uh, also special education at age three that we're dealing with? I Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Early intervention yeah. in some cases. Um, yeah. It's just uh, it's preschool for mm -hmm. for for special ed kids. Right. That, that yeah, that's. Uh, I'll overshare just a bit here. Um, I I came to the district ten years ago. Um, this is my 36th year. I'm, I'm loving the, the chalkboard because my first years of teaching, I had a chalkboard. I do remember that. I hated it, but I had a chalkboard. But did you have a wooden chalk tray, though? I mean, just <laughs> no, it was not that, that that's legit. <laughs> that's legit. Um, but I did have somebody who would clean it on a regular basis. But anyway, um, so with with the special education piece, now I completely forgot what I was going to say. So, uh, oh, so 10 years ago when I when we when, when I came here, um, the delivery model was not where it needed to be for students receiving special education services. And over a period of 10 years, um, Neely's been here nine, uh, Laura's been here for, for more than the 10 years, have had an integral part in really developing what is a really solid special education department. Now, the upside to that is that we're providing services and programs, we're keeping our kids here, and, and, and our kids are benefit, benefiting from that. Word's gotten out, has it? Word has definitely <laughs> gotten out. That, because, th let's be honest, there are other districts who are in the same category, and they decide they are not going to provide the services. They'll fight it tooth and nail. The downside to that is, A, the student doesn't get what they need in order to be successful in life, and B, they're not providing what they really are mandated to provide. So they taught, and so we've had an increase. I, I would say that there's a C there as well. Um, by, by providing the proper services for special education students, 
it actually improves the service in, for your, your general population sure. as well. Um, you don't have as many disruptions, you know, especially students that aren't getting the right services can be disrupted yeah, in the classroom. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a really holistic approach to you know, providing education for all, all of our students. And, and what we're doing isn't different than what gets done in a lot of other districts. We're just, we're just doing it with more fidelity and, and, and more um, attention to detail yeah. for our students. Um, so that, I hope that answered the, the special education piece. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. when I presented last year, we talked about the three-year plan. So everything that you're going to hear now was in that plan from last year. It's nothing additional that we did talk about. Yeah, I'm just going to mention too on, on the stuff you, Kevin just talked about that we've added this year. You know, much of that was planned adjustment counselors and, and the related arts positions, things that we felt we needed to kind of shore up the foundation of our school district. But again, you go back to that special ed, ed page. None of that was really planned. Those were all right. things that occur throughout the year, and, and this happens to us every year. And, and again, more for the new folks, you know, we, we have to start every year with a budget based on things that we know. But you know, um, a school district changes every year. Students move in the district. Students move out of the district. Students that have been here suddenly present um, with with needs that hadn't presented before, and you know, that causes causes you know additional special expenditures yep. that you just couldn't have planned for yep. um, at the beginning of the year. So. So at the primary school, uh, there's a very strong possibility that we will expand the pre-K program. Uh, there's a lot of interest. Um, Cindy had showed me the list today. There's, a, there's growing interest in students at four years old wanting to be in full day uh, pre-K. So there's a possibility that that would be expanded. Um, so we would look for a .5 teacher, a part-time teacher, and a part-time uh, paraprofessional to be in there with them. Now that's fee structured, so hopefully it's it's cost neutral. There's no guarantee that it'll be 100% cost neutral, but it is going to be pretty close to being cost neutral. But that would allow us to expand the program and meet the the, the, the request that we're getting within the community. Uh, you cannot school choice into pre-K. It, 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 it's only Douglas students. Um, Cindy is looking to expand and add a point .2 uh, Spanish teacher, which is basically just a, an exploratory Spanish, which she did this year. Um, on a, with a volunteer, it's proving to be very effective. The kids seem to be gravitating towards it. Um, it is basically one fifth of a teaching position. It's not a teaching position, it's one fifth of a teaching position. Uh, she'll continue the coding and programming and the robotics that she's got going on. Something to keep in mind, and I mentioned this uh, t recently, uh, there is a possibility that um, kindergarten may expand. Numbers seem to, the census numbers seem to be getting higher at the four and five year old, um, at the five year old age bracket, and it looks like there might be the need to expand kindergarten, but the problem with that is you might not know that until August 27th and we start on August 28th, because people don't register their children, they just put it off, put it off, and then all of a sudden she gets a surge at the end, and all of a sudden you, you have eight, ten more people coming into your building that you didn't anticipate. <coughs> right now our class size is 21, I think it is, 21, 22 in kindergarten, which is a little bit higher than we would like. We'd like it to be 17 or 18. Uh, but if we get additional students, then you're looking at the possibility of having to do a part-time or a full-time. Going back to that, that history, I think in FY16, we were at 28, 29 oh, yeah. in the classroom. Mm -hmm. so, like, just to show you kind of where we were and kind of the kids want where we were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mason, could I just throw in the, uh, the numbers here? Yep. Last year, the census, we're just starting kindergarten registration this week. And last year, the numbers for the census were 64. By the time school started, we had 87 mm -hmm. kindergartners. So this year, our census is starting at 90. So if we gain another 20, that's why we're, we're anticipating. Because we just don't know. People don't register. So we're thinking that that is a, a very real possibility. But right now, we don't have it as a definitive. But again, we'll have to make adjustment as we go along if it does become. Is there any perception? that the news, if you will, of the successful override has had a direct effect or is going to be having an effect well, on I think for sure. Yeah. Well, I think uh, you need some of that both, with some both of the choice numbers. Kindergarten, you know, right. besides the, the choice in it, eighth grade, mm -hmm. is it actually affecting it right at the beginning? Correct. Yeah, and yep. that, that could just be demographics. It could be the North Street development. Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm assuming some of it is, you know, I think it's probably multiple factors that are contributing okay. to it, you know. I will provide you a little piece of data that talks about the school choice numbers and, and so okay. forth. Sure, yeah, sure. Okay. I also think it's the preschool having that full day option, yes. which we never had before. We have 48 full day four year olds that will go into kindergarten. 
Which well, my before, kids went to we preschool. Had they had kindergarten there as had. well. So I think if kids are starting preschool here, they're now yep. doing kindergarten rather than doing kindergarten where their preschool was. That another factor. So you're tuitioning. Uh, what's the number of tuitioned? It's, it's not 48. It's, it's not a piece 48. of that. It's a lot more than that because yeah. some are two day more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some are four day, right. uh, full day. It's, right. it's such a different combination, right. but it gives all the parents the variety. And where is that being held, please? At it's the elementary the school. Primary school. Mm -hmm. primary school. At the the older building, yeah. um, at the elementary school, we're looking to bring uh, STEM and digital technology to the to the building. Right now, there is a, a void of STEM and, and digital technology in that building, uh, for, for the reasons being that we just have not been able to hire someone. This has been on the docket for a few years as well. Uh, that this position we anticipate would provide direct instruction. It would do um, things such as digital technologies, digital citizenship, internet safety. Um, uh, and, and the other piece of it would be the engineering piece, which we think is an important piece. The, mm -hmm. the opportunity for kids to build things and break them apart and, and build them in different different ways and understand um, the, that we anticipate that that, t that position would also work collaboratively with the teachers to help them to implement more technology into their classrooms. Somebody who's more comfortable <coughs> with it, supporting a teacher who might not be as comfortable, then becomes more comfortable. And we're hoping that that would be a, a, a reciprocal. So I have a general advantage. question. Yeah, since we're on digital technology. Yeah. Uh, and children. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have three young grandchildren. My son and his, his wife don't want their kids mm -hmm. touching anything. They don't watch, let them watch TV. Right. Um, interestingly enough, they got them all cameras, so they all have cameras. One is five, one's four, one's three. And uh, the last birthday was recently, and all, I have a picture of them, all three of them lined up at the end of a the table. They all have their cameras in hand. Mm -hmm. Well, their cameras also have little games on them. Of course. Mm. Right. All three of them. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, three, four, five. It's a, uh, no, they are so attracted to this. Yeah. And I guess my fear is, I, I hope that the schools aren't going to add to that. Uh, well, it, it's, it, uh, it is structured it's, towards academics. It's not... It, no, it doesn't... Yeah, right. but supposedly, I mean, from what I've read and heard, mm. is it, it's screen time, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. No, it, it, not... Within our buildings? No, it's yeah. screen time oh, that, no is, that is the yeah. problem. No, There's yes. no question. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and, and you go back to the need for adjustment counselors. And, well, you know, I, I, think I don't want to give them something in school that's going to have them go to an yeah, adjustment I counselor. Think, um, I, I think that I, I understand the concern. Okay. Um, I, I, don't, I don't share the same concern. Oh, um, okay. Because I, I feel supervised use of, of electronics is, is much different than what you're getting um, at home be. in a lot of yeah. cases. Great, great academic you know, tools. Use, I use, would, use sure. properly, use effectively. I, yeah. I would add, add kind of piggyback onto, onto Pam's comment. As a parent, uh, your grandchildren are a little bit younger. I'm thinking of like my 13-year-old daughter. As a parent, it's it, the digital aspect, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's mm. great in some respects mm -hmm. of, you know, I don't have to worry about my child forgetting their homework in their desk at school. Mm -hmm. You know, we can go online, a lot of the, the education plans are there, you can download them. As a parent, a lot of times I hear, you know, oh dad, I, I need an iPad or I need a laptop to do that. And, you know, kids have Instagram, they've got mm -hmm. iMessaging, all the rest so of that. Of those are filtered out at the school, I hope you understand it, that. At the yeah. school, yes, but what I'm saying when it comes time for, as a parent yeah. for homework well, time, you right. you need to have I set my daughter up on my desk yeah. in my office right. to do her homework, right. and, you know, I can hear the iPad from the okay. kitchen as I'm, as I'm doing yeah. dishes, you know, yeah. bing, you know, yeah. oh, she's getting a message from right. one of her friends. Right. It's a distraction right. and sometimes. Right. That's why, you know, as a, again, as a parent, it's, it's almost nice to be like, okay, here's your textbook, yeah. mm -hmm. give me the cell phone, mm -hmm. give me the iPad, mm -hmm. take that all away. Right. You're in the office to do your homework right now or at the dining room table to do your homework right now. It's easier to police it. Mm -hmm. When you start integrating the technology, that's why I say it's a bit of a double-edged sword of, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good thing because it, it's easy to access and to, to manipulate with it or to work with it, but it does add an extra hurdle of trying to police that right. at home. I think they add something. This is important. Um, where I was just in an airport um, in both Boston and in uh, Fort Lauderdale last week, and there, almost every carriage I saw had a baby holding the parent's phone or iPad, and every child on the airplane was given 
electronic manipulator. Exactly. So the genie's out of the bottle. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, if you advance this, I guarantee you your daughter's collegiate experience, every class will be fully digital. She will not be given textbooks. Right. Absolutely. Right. Smart they boards. Do and boards. Right. They do. Uh, and so it's one of these things where, and, and that the 21st century learner is told you have to be able to collaborate. And that means digitally, that means with students across the country, across the world, through electronic media that brings them all together. And so again, the challenge that we have is to navigate those rocky shoals. And you know, we, we try to put together as many digital fences as we can to keep those children in. So we, we, we definitely understand yeah. um, we have drop everything and read at the middle school and the kids are read a book, here is your book. And then when the kid forgets a book, we do have the digital that they can go to. And for the kids that have learning issues and reading issues, we have an audio book, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful access for them. Mm -hmm. But we do, again, try to, here is the sure. book, put your nose in a book. So it's it's a double-edged sword. Absolutely. The genes out of the bottle, we're definitely sensitive Oh, there's, there's no going back, you know. I, I, I don't want to take it back. It right. just, like I say, it adds an extra hurdle. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I go back to my first years of teaching. You used to have to sign out a television with a VCR. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I'm sorry, my first years, we had a film strip projector. And, and, you know, pick a kid. You turn when it, when it bings, you turn it. <laughs> Film strip. Down. But then they put channel one, which was a national program, right. put mm -hmm. the TVs in, in the classroom in the with the VCR. Yeah. And everybody thought what was going to happen was all they're going to do is watch TV all right. day. Well, that's not what happened with it. What happened is it was used as an educational tool when it was when it was appropriate. Mm -hmm. Same thing's happening and in our schools. Right. The, the problem is that it is it's 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 a twenty four seven type of thing. I mean, we all, we're all guilty of it. Yeah. We're all guilty of, of looking at the phones and what's going on and so forth. So I, 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 I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. but we're going to try to teach digital citizenship and, and, and proper uses and so forth, which I think if they're going to learn it, they should learn it early and, 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 and go with it from there. So um, at the middle school, the only thing that we're looking to add at this point in time is a STEM teacher. I, I, I find it somewhat difficult, but not to have STEM in a middle school is sort of almost unconscionable at this point in time. But why are you singling that out as a as an item rather than integrate that into your whole curriculum? So it is it is part of the science in the in, I'm sorry part of the science in the math curriculum. But right now we don't have technology, we don't have engineering in the middle school. So they can do the science, they can do the math, and they've done some great field trips this year in in, 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 in around STEM. So this position would be somebody who supports the science and math curriculum, but also is providing the technology and the engineering piece, um, which which is really the critical piece of it, it would be part of the related arts. It would be the the third or the fourth related art that they would they would take, but they would get it in six, seven, and eight. But in a small small modicum of, of time, it's not a full course, but it would be exposure to the technology and the engineering piece that that really is an important. And I mean, STEM is is it's all you hear now. I'm is, is taking STEM. all three of my grandchildren to STEM already. STEM, there it is. <laughs> um, and in the high school, we are looking to reinstate the 1.0 health teacher position, which was cut five years ago when Lou Colabello left. Um, right now, our health classes are being taught by, uh, have been taught by my manufacturing teacher at one point, um, very serious, <coughs> by my art teacher. Um, Family consumer, science. consumer science teacher Music are all teaching health because we had to find some. It's a state mandate, mm -hmm. and I had to find somebody to teach it. So right. you can teach one outside of your discipline. Actually, all those people actually got the certification, so they were certified to teach it. We'd like to reinstate it, and we'd like to have that person champion the health curriculum and meet with the middle school health teacher to really develop a solid six, seven, eight, nine, ten health curriculum that kids are going to be exposed to. Over over the period of years, exposed might not be a good thing. Might not be a good thing to say in that. No. Okay. Um, um, so so that's the that's the primary position that they're looking for. Um, we're looking for a 1.0 um, special education teacher. So we have we're changing the delivery model. Um, we're hoping to move away from most school districts in the, in the nation are moving away from the the dependence on uh, paraprofessionals and and ABAs. In, in putting classroom certified special education teachers in the classroom and working in a collaborative model. So collaborative academic inclusion, I think is what we're, we're, we're calling it. 
Um, so there will be some cross factor there, but it should be mitigated by the elimination of some of the paraprofessionals so that it would be sort of hoping to be cost neutral. <coughs> but now you would have in the classroom a, um, a, a content specialist and a special education specialist, certified educators, um, and most districts in the state are going into that model. Um, so that's the, the special ed. Um, last year we talked a lot about animals and plant sciences. And we have not given up on that because we think it's a niche that we really need to capitalize. Uh, so we're looking for a biology science teacher who is going to do that, bring the animal science, bring the plant science, bring biomedical, so that we can address a lot of the things that are going on in the vocational schools, the, the Northwalk Aggie and the, um, the BVT. Again, trying to keep our kids here, but also develop a niche where people from Northbridge and Uxbridge and, and Oxford and Webster are going to want a tr school choice in because they want to get into the animal and plant science program. And I'll show you this, that there are very few that have that, and this is, this, this is an opportunity for us to get in. Uh, we talked about community gardens. We talked about trying to you know, fundraise and, and build a, a greenhouse on site. Um, doing some of the flower beds on all of the, and, and the kids would have the responsibility for working with those. So the horticultural piece of it would be a, a, a tremendous opportunity for them. Um, and, 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 you know, one position can do a lot of those things. Um, and then for elective courses, because we're now able to move our art teacher out of health, if we get that position, she would then teach two health classes. So, you know, something along the lines of um, uh, the uh, ceramics that we haven't been able to offer because she just can't uh, find a place to do it because she's teaching health class. Um, robotics, we offered robotics now. We look to expand robotics and continue to expand it. We used to have biotechnology. We had to cut it. I'd like to bring biotechnology back. There are many jobs in the area in biotechnology. Some of the things that don't really cost anything, uh, academic pathways, which we talked about, expanding those, expanding the early college program. Uh, Becker, Josh has already met with uh, Becker. Uh, they do have an animal and plant science component that we can we can hook into with them, and they would be sort of our um, uh, uh, mentors, if you will, in being able to develop the program, and our kids would have the opportunity to work with them and take courses through them. So we've got Becker College and um, looking to expand uh, the early college program and try to maybe get into Worcester State, maybe try to get into a WPI, maybe try to get into some of those other schools that will allow our kids to take courses. And one thing that I've been involved in, and now Josh is uh, on the subcommittee, the Blackstone Valley Superintendents Consortium <coughs> is looking, uh, Pam, based on what you were talking about, the whole idea of regionalization. At the high school level, there are a lot of specialty courses that don't generate 30 kids who want to go into a classroom, but you don't want to not offer the course. So we, right now, for next year, there's a, there's a uh, pilot program scheduled for next year in the area of manufacturing. So what we're looking to do is there's 13, I'm sorry, 12 school districts that are part of this process. So I'll give you an example. At, at Douglas High School, we offer AP Microeconomics. We're one of the only schools in, in Central Mass that offers it. We've had it for 15, 20 years. So the plan would be that you all live in other districts that do not offer AP Microeconomics. In a distance learning opportunity, you can now take AP Microeconomics through our teacher, but gives you the opportunity to take that course. So <laughs> let's say, for, so for example, we don't have an economics course right now. We hope to have it. We don't have an economics course. But I got a kid who's taking marketing and personal finance and entrepreneurship and accounting, and would really like to take an economics course, they can go and do an online collaborative with, within the, um, the region, and now I can take an economics course. I might be the only kid in Douglas taking economics, but I'm taking it with people. I mean, I, I taught in the virtual high school 25 years ago. This is not a new concept. This has been around for a long, long time. So distance learning would be the piece of it. So there's that. We'd like to start a DECA program, which is a distributive education program. And it's basically a, a competitive business program. It's short money. It's a, it's a stipend and, and, and maybe one bus trip to a, to a conference. But it's a new program that can develop. And there are some schools in the area that have hundreds of kids in the DECA program, and they go to all over, the, all over the nation. They fundraise and they go all over the place and they, they compete. Uh, one thing that we've been desperate to try to get is a per diem trainer. Um, we don't have a trainer. Uh, we, we have a 911 and, and that's our trainer. And um, if we could get a per diem trainer, I think it's better for the, for, the, for the town, but also to have somebody 
at home games. That's we're not talking about an everyday thing. We're talking about this this uh, uh, soccer game tonight at, at in Douglas. Our trainer will be there if somebody gets hurt, and they 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 do get hurt. They do get hurt, um, and that would be you know that would probably be around ten thousand dollars to cover all of our home games uh, and have somebody certified there. And then so the trainer is a is a supervisor. We, yeah, so we would contract with someone to come in and, 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 and provide the services, and, and also if, you know if, if you've got a, a sprained ankle and you've got no yeah. one. You know, helping you with, with with caring for it. That would be something that they could do. I mentioned the special ed positions already. Those are those are redundant. And at the district, the last page of it, um, Cindy mentioned it already. The numbering of the building it's not consistent. The keys at the at the at the um, elementary school primary school need to be uh, updated. There's different keys for different doors. Um, I went into the cafeteria. There's three different keys for three different doors. It would really yeah. be nice if it was yeah. one key in an emergency situation. So we're trying to get the keys taken care of, and um, I think that's pretty much. Glycol. Glyc oh, I'm sorry. Glycol is for the heating units, the heating element. It's um, replacing the glycol in some of our heating units. I don't know if anybody knows glycol really well, but we need we need glycol. <laughs> it doesn't freeze. It's right, it won't freeze up. It's right. in a cold area. Um, it's not an insignificant expenditure. That's why it's worth calling out. Mm -hmm. I wanted to share just a couple of quick documents with you. This first one is related to um, special education. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, this one I want to go first. I'm going to send the police department up to use your printer. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> I do go front. I do, duty. I, I do I'm more going, front yeah. Sometimes, so. Um, and so, one, one question, though. Yes, absolutely. You know, you, uh, adding another uh, full-time custodian. Uh, oh, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, have you ever thought of just looking into, like, uh, you know, Hiring an outside firm to do this yeah. stuff, and you know you don't, because I mean you you hire another person now you've got uh, health insurance, you've Correct. got vacations, you've got uh, uh, pensions. Uh, I mean, so I have, I have worked in districts a with lot, a lot of contracted money out that goes into that. Right, I have worked in districts that have contracted out. I understand your point. Yeah. And, um, it has not proven, I've not found Thanks. it to be, most of them have gone oh, away from it and gone back to their own staff um, within the district. Uh, you're right though, it does. it is another person, it is another insurance and right. so on and so forth. However, um, it, it most of those positions are part-time, they don't, they, 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 they limit the services that they provide. It's very specific and very detailed and, and so if there's a paper on the floor that, that's not it, it, it's not on their floor that they're responsible for. They won't pick it up. They'll they'll just leave it there. I, I don't know what that would do. Yeah, that's talking about outside services, spaces, but about for outside stuff. Yeah. I guess yeah. is it so the vision we're looking yeah. for is, is is really an outside person mm -hmm. to take care of the grounds. Uh, if you, as you know, um, we, we actually did not fill a position this year and held back on a position. So this is something that's been in the in the works for a couple of years. You've got you've got a lot of outdoor space, field mm -hmm. space, right. uh, flower beds, right. so on and so forth. Right. Um, so we're looking for somebody who will really be dedicated to that. But I guess yeah. that would that be makes sense to contract versus? Is, I don't think we've tried, explored that, yeah. but I can't imagine that landscapers would be cheaper than, than they, less expensive than what we would pay for They come in with the rock. gang mowers and it's done, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I think you, you really start looking into what all of your expenses are when you hire someone. Yeah. yeah I mean, okay. what you looking for a salary? That's yeah, just a little. That's, nope. Oh, I, that's I understand. Just a little I think it's sort of the line to me on things like snow removal and stuff like that too. Like our, our guys come out in the snowstorm and I don't know that you get that with a contract service. So much right. so. The ownership, and I'll, I'll speak to the, yeah, from Uxbridge, and they did go to an outside consultant. You don't have the ownership and the maintaining of the building. Like, right. you know, you have someone in there, and uh, I won't speak to your budget, right. but from my position, they have a very limited staff maintaining yep. the number of square foot that they have no to maintain. Question. For, um, and they do an outstanding job. Again, I'm um, from an outside looking in, but right. we, we did change to some of that outside consultant. You don't maintain the buildings to the level they should be maintained. Okay, but you're talking, I, I'm looking more at this where they're talking about outside spaces. This is the one that, that I'm looking at. Right. That's what you're talking about. That's, that's, that's the same that's custodian the position. So they would be outside, when they're able to be outside, they'd be outside, but yeah. they'd also be working inside. Oh, okay. So right now you have a we have a couple of part-time people who are working just part-time to, to, to do clean the buildings at the end of the, end of the day. Um, and we're looking to expand that, make it a full time, make the position full time, but get the person to be outdoors most of the time. Jeff Collette does a lot of it. He's the facility manager, but he's responsible for everything. Um, and, and, and so having someone dedicated to, to the outside maintenance would be really, really important. Now, these part time people you have, how many hours a week do they work? They, they work 
four hours a day. So. So basically, they're not on health insurance. They're not on yeah, any of any. There's only, there's only you get over that twenty hours. Right, there's, there's there's one part time, and, and we didn't hire a part time. So we actually actually yeah. had another part time that we did not hire. Then you're really you're right into it. Then you're right into the. Uh, What's the cost for what's, what's benefits? A, a, yeah, benefits. Yeah. What's a family health insurance policy cost? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably seventeen, eighteen thousand. Yeah. So what's so do you add that on? Uh, yeah. So how, you know the amount of hours that their, their person works with their with their vacations and everything. So what are you talking? You're talking about like thirty dollars an hour probably for health insurance when you really figure the amount of hours they're working and what it's costing you. True, but again, when you factor in hiring a, a, an outside agency, they're all already factoring that piece into right. their employees That's as what well. they're charging you right. on. You know, but so you, you know what? Most employees do not get the benefits that town employees get. I'll tell you. <laughs> There's the difference. Yeah. I, I, like I said, and I won't speak to yeah. that budget, yeah. but I have been in a district where they just don't have the maintenance of the buildings, right. and we have a lot of square footage. Right. And we want to maintain it's something worth exploring. It, 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 yeah. Well, well I know that we have. I think Courtney has o o over the years, and um, just didn't feel that it was as, as effective as it cost effective as it, that she thought it was going to be. Um, the document I just gave to you yep. relates to the whole matter of, of special education, and, and you're seeing in front of you, it's, it's student support services, but it's also some population data. So I took just area towns uh, in, 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 in towns that I thought might be close in proximity to the numbers of student enrollments. And what, you, what the, the purpose of this is to, is to basically to show you that what we have for numbers in Douglas is not out of the out of the ordinary. It is it is pretty much standard fare across the board. Um, we it, 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 it feels like it's a lot, um, but it's really not. It's really not at all. What's ELO? So English language learners. So okay. students who move into the district who do not have English as their first language. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we have seven. Um, two years ago, we had zero. Mm -hmm. So, but seven means you need a teacher, mm -hmm. and if we get a few more, you might need another teacher. Um, um, one other fact, I, I just need to add, if I could, Mr. Means, um, we have the lowest out of district placements in the Black Stone Valley. Mm -hmm. So, what that really translates to is that we have programs that that are sustainable. You know, and, and allow the kids to stay here and, and be educated in district. Mm -hmm. Out-of-district placements can be 200, We're, 300 is, they, is that listed the out-of-district here or no? That What's is not. No, I didn't see it. Yes. Okay. But we have 14. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right, right. All right. I, I, so I thought it was interesting to put that information out there so that you could see that <coughs> special education, here's, you hear a lot about special education, you hear a lot about the English language learners. <coughs> You know we're 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 there with 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 virtually everybody percentage wise, um, and I think the far right is an important piece also. It's economically dis disadvantaged. Um, I don't know why I, say it's, I shouldn't say disability. I should say disadvantaged. Um, and if you look at it, we're at 15.4 percent of our student population qualifies as economically disadvantaged. But if you look at a town like say Southbridge, it's almost 70 percent. Um, but if you look at a town like Menden Upton, 9.1. So we're in the in the ballpark in that regards, and that and, and um, so I just wanted to, to share that with you because it gives you a better picture of, of where we're really at with regards to um, our special education piece. Um, real quickly, I will pass this along to you. This is a um, this will give you information on um, school choice because I know that was a con that was the concern that we talked about a lot last year with school choice and where are we with regards to school choice. So the upside is that we were on the we were on the downside last year. Yep. Our numbers were on the downside. Um, well, not, they, they, were, they were trending. Um, <coughs> right. We still we still had more school choice in than we had school right. choice well, out, we, but those two numbers were converging. We never versus. actually looked we at had, that. But yeah. We had fewer than we were receiving last year, and we were going out. So, if you were to look at that, the that that this breaks it down by um, by grade level for you. And it, this is a state document, so you can get this online. I'm not giving you anything. That's secret here. Um, it also shows you um, vocational schools, uh, charter schools, out of district, homeschooled, in state, out of school, out of district, out of state uh, parochial schools. So all that information is there for you to take a look at. Uh, if you look at the back, the second page, however, that's the one that's probably the most important piece. Um, you know how we, you you had made a point of it last year when we were talking about that. 
if you look at 16, 17, we had 124 students that we received in in school choice. And then in 17, 18, we had a noticeable drop to 110. And uh, in, in 16, 17, we had 63 that we were sending out. 17, 18, we had 76. And th th that was the fear factor that existed within the community. So I'm happy to say that this year in 18, 19, we're back to almost 130 uh, in the receiving category, so we're up, we're up markedly, and we're sending out fewer. And we we have fewer attending uh, Blackstone Valley Technical. Well, actually, we have one more attending, but that is because the, of the senior class. That, that's a four-year right. thing. Yeah. But you can see that but this um, year's freshman class was smaller than small, the previous uh, two freshman uh, classes. So hopefully. That will continue. Again, we want kids to attend BBT that really right. want to go to Absolutely. those programs. We just don't want yeah. kids to attend BBT just because they don't want to attend Douglas. You know? yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So. Private school has gone up a yeah. little bit. There's, there's seven more students out in, in private schools. Um, parents have the right to choose to send their students to, to private schools. And we don't have to pay for it, right? Nope. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I'm going to give you, and I'll, then I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet. This is so actually from... The sending public column is them going to other public Correct. schools? Okay. Correct. And so we're on, the, we're on the positive side of that, which, mm -hmm. is, a, which is obviously a good thing um, from the town's perspective. Right? Um, and this last piece is what uh, Mr. Romano had put together. Um, this goes to, to the point about being competitive. What are other schools offering? What don't we presently offer? Can we get into the ball game if we can offer some of these programs going forward? I mean, if you pay attention to the news and the, maybe the front page of the Blackstone Valley Tribune, um, there's certainly the other, other school districts in the area are definitely heading in the same direction. No question. Uh, uh, no, and that, that's a very, I think, important point is that as we're trying to become more competitive, everyone else is upping their game as well, which makes it even more <laughs> difficult. So Great. even if we act on everything in our plan here, it doesn't mean that we're in... You know, you can just sit still, and that's where you're at. Yeah. You know, it's it's. But again, know. the hope is that people will want to come here that might not have a program where they are. I mean, I think yeah. maybe the important thing. I mean, we are financially constrained. Is yeah. yep. do a good job at what you're doing. Right. Right. So, and that's what's you know what's kept us afloat yeah. to this point. <laughs> and so, uh, this gives you an idea. It, it it Josh has put this together, and it's it reflects the obviously the schools in the in the in the DVC and in, in the in the area as well, the, the Swickle in the area. And what they're offering, uh, their per pupil expenditures, yeah. and, and what they're offering, the difference. So you can see I, I mentioned the academic pathways. It's not unique to us. BBT has, uh, begun, has begun it. Nitmuck has begun it. Northbridge has begun it. Oxbridge has. We plan on having it in place for next year. Uh, you look at plant science, the only one who has it is Nitmuck. That's why I was, I'm saying there's a real niche there. Um, I don't, I don't believe the kids <laughs> want to ride an hour to, to Walpole an hour back. You know, Narragansett High School in Rhode Island has a huge program. There's a, there's a um, I'm trying to remember the other program in the area. You know, Plant what we've been talking about was hydroponics as well. We like yeah. to, yeah. We'd I like think to they bring do it in association with URI. URI like it's yeah. huge, but uh, it's on. huge. Yeah. Uh, you can see criminal justice or forensics across the board. Um, right now we don't have it. We're looking to implement it. That would be one of the things that we would be able to add if we get the health teachers back because that would allow a person who's teaching health to go back to teaching a history class, which is what they are certified in. Um, Look at the early college. So BVT began it. Oxbridge has it. We've always had it, but you had to go to Quincy for your senior year, if, but you had, and you had to qualify for it. Not very many do. Um, so, and then if you look at the animal science, again a niche for us there. And this just gives you an idea of what other people are doing. So that right. what we're talking about isn't something that's high in the sky. So it's an information yeah. sheet that's really good. This is yeah, the, this the information. That's what we were hoping to do tonight was to come in. And provide Sorry. you with information. And, and who, see did this? This, who did this again? Uh, Josh did this for the high school. Josh Romano. Josh, thank you. So thank I you see this job. page is having two potential areas of impact for us. You know, can we add you know animal plant science? Yeah. But the collaborative group with the other twelve districts, where you know, can we have someone go attend right. criminal justice classes? You know, virtually yeah. at one of these other schools, and you know, so you look at this and see how can we start participating in some of these things without having to add them. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Does the high school have foreign language? We do, so just Spanish. Just Spanish. One of the, one of the, one of the um, casualties of the cuts was French. Okay. We, weren't able to, we weren't able to sustain it. Um, so um, now we do offer um, just Spanish. Um, but the school committee did um, pass and approve the, uh, the compliance with Mass Corps 
uh, which means that every student now, unless they have an IEP that would, would, would waiver them out of it, will take up Spanish, which was, it wasn't, wasn't a mandate 92% of our kids take four or five years of it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, wasn't in, the, in the program of studies as a uh, requirement. Now it's a graduation requirement that they take two years. And so um, they'll have to create a conversational and a cultural, it's called the culture and conversation class, two years of it, which is more, not, it's not geared towards the conjugation of <coughs> verbs and so on and so forth. It's more about this is, this is a Spanish-speaking nation and this is a little bit about that culture mm -hmm. and so forth. But we did check in colleges, do accept it as um, world language credits. So it does make them competitive for the college application process. Well, we didn't go f over. I mean, we went through your spread, your uh, PowerPoint presentation type thing. Mm -hmm. But what we didn't go through was the other, uh, this one. But I saw the vice chairman uh, going Which through one is that? the district review and proposals. Mm -hmm. And so I think this will be an important one for us to to read when we get home. Yeah, and I think you're going to find what a lot of what's here is, has been discussed. Absolutely. The it's details on paper for you. Right. So if you didn't take notes, they're, they're here for you. Perfect. <laughs> so, Perfect. Um, this, is, this, is, yeah. this is the road map mm -hmm. that yep. we had talked about. Yeah. Um, so we'll be back in two weeks to discuss um, the budget. Um, okay. I think, I think we're on your, your calendar for two weeks from now. Um, I, th yes. I think so, yes. The so 12th, good. I think. Um, yeah. in, important to note, a lot of the things that Kevin just talked about, things we want to add, are in that budget. Are in that are, are budget. Not are in not budget. in that budget. Okay. Okay. The budget you're getting is, is level service. Level yeah, service where we are right now. Okay. Just to understand. And 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 that level service where we are right now is is higher than the level of service again from the last time we talked to you last April. Right. Um, because of the things that we were able to add after the yeah. season ended and whatnot. So, okay. but just so you have a, you know a rough idea going into that conversation that that conversation is going to be about level service to this. All the things here. Not not in that yet, but things that we feel like. So you know, we'll get like down to, to the nitty gritty and talk about finances and what what's available yeah. for funding yeah. and whatever. Right. right. We yeah, have cost estimates for that. The I you know, think the addition secondary the budget are, are those yeah. additions yeah. cost estimates. This is what we were yeah. talking about today. I, I think it's probably another two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand. The yamuts in our budget would get us to add in most all those of extra the additional things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When will we see that? The, with the I'm sorry the. The, the budget proposal with the added 250. Mm -hmm. um, the, what did, what, did, what have I got? Without the added 250? No, with it. I know. With and I'm just, I, I was going to say, right, sure. the budget we submitted without the added 250 is, is already probably more than what the town's going to be able to afford. So we, we, we only submitted the level service okay. budget. That's so what I'm, I, I'm, that's just, what I'm, just, I'm, I'm just giving you to be honest. You know, but we know, we know that the, the other things that we want to add are you know, that about $300,000. But yeah, we don't have the budget prepared with those other things added. Okay. You know, we, have, you know, we, we know the positions, they're all listed here. We, we, can, we can detail it out for you and say, okay, there, here's, here's the line items of mm -hmm. the additional things that are not in this budget. We can bring a sheet for you that has that, okay. if you'd like. Okay. Well, will you be pitching to get a budget that has those additional things in it? Um, well, we're going to meet budget subcommittee to, uh, Thursday. We're yeah. going to meet as an admin team tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. We're going to meet again as a school committee on Wednesday of next week. Yeah. So there's a lot of conversations yeah. that will go on as to, you know, where are we. I think it's important to remember that when, we t when I came forward last year, it was, it was a plan for a couple of years to, yeah. to, to keep us competitive. And, and, that w and we did say that it wasn't going to be free. We knew that that was going to be the case. Right. So we need to make some tough decisions um, on priorities in, in what we can and what we can't. Um, however, if, if you look at that document that Josh provided to you, if you can't, you just fall, sure. fall behind. I mean, that's, that's sure. the inevitable truth. That, that, that's yep. part of that whole process. Yeah, and we, we just wanted to be realistic with what we right. submitted for a budget request. And again, we, we feel we need all these things in, you know, in the long term, but you know, knowing that just even a level service budget is, is going to be beyond kind of what you know, we, we would normally get for an allocation from the town. So, so if you, if you, you know, look at to give you a heads up, you know. Right. Just if you yeah. look at the police cars, and, and they said they wouldn't come back until 24, sure. there isn't much more beyond what I presented here that is down the road for additional staffing, additional mm -hmm. programs. We're, we're, we're getting them in place 
and then you hope to grow the programs. That's that's the piece that you get the right teacher in for an animal and plant sciences, and all of a sudden you've got kids who want to come to the district because you have animal and plant sciences that you didn't have before. So that's the that's that's the next piece of it. it is it isn't ten more positions the following year. It's now we grow the program, and that's that's the hope. If I may, yep. I got completely lost the last two minutes. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna if I sure. may break it down a little. Okay. Bit. Yep. The 1819 budgeting that Brett, you're suggesting that 2019-20 budget will be, if you will, level funding. Mm -hmm. level, no. level service. Level service. Right now. service. Level service. Fair enough. So Fair all enough. the positions sure. that we have currently sure. in place, sure. you know, okay. which includes things that we added post budget from last year. Because of the override. Yes or uh, no? Not necessarily. We added no. We, we didn't really add much because of the override. The override, you know, remember, actually got us back to level service. If without the override... We would go over the That's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Well, actually, That's we, we still would have found a way to be level service, but we would have basically eaten up all of our revolving funds mm -hmm. and then been in a position this year where there's nothing that's left to yeah. go for next year. That answers my question. That, okay. That's how yes. it was presented, okay. as you recall. They were going to do a two-year commitment by the school committee, which would have been this year. Yes. To, and then to beyond stay, that, we were going to be stable yeah. to Got keep it. all positions in We would have been over the cliff next that. year without the After yeah. that, we would have yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. We're done. Okay. I have a question. Sure. In our minutes of January 22, it says, um, the school committee has been asked to prepare two budgets. One with a 1% increase and one with a 2% increase. So are you going to prepare it, propose it to us that way? We have the 2% is, is what I would think. I mean, we would well, we would come back with a 1%, but... So two different budgets. A 1% and a 2%. <coughs> yeah, that's... <coughs> what do you want the minutes yeah. say? Yeah. So. so were you asked to prepare two budgets? Well, we, yes, we, we did have a 1% and a 2%, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean... So we have two things to look at in two weeks? Mm -hmm. So one percent and two percent. I'd I'd request that we that you put that in an electronic form so that we can look at it. No, that would be cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, just yeah, because it's safe. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna be. I'm, I'm not sure that we'll we'll be able to get there by this. <coughs> we we have the level service budget prepared, which is more than one or two percent um, at this point. Mm. You know, so e even if we get 2%, if we only get 2%, we're still going to have to find a way to, to fit into that. Um, and we're already working on how do we, you know, where can we shave things and um, what can we not bring back or whatnot. Um, so it, it'll really be a, a subtraction exercise for us, depending on whether it's, you know, it's going to be a subtraction exercise at 1% or 2% for us. Let's put it that way. So but what's the percent re uh, request now? I think it's 5.25 level service. So again, just Inflation. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's some of that. It's, you Changes. know, yeah. You know, there were some plan things that if we had just done the plan things, we'd probably be coming, you know, asking for 3.5%. It's, it's the unanticipated. The unanticipated. Yeah. Yeah. Really that comes afterwards, work. you know, yeah. elevates yeah. that. Yeah. 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 You don't know who's going to keep the kids in district. So, if you've got this huge sped for the year, there are a couple of areas where you can get, I think this is one for unanticipated change. Mm -hmm. There's one area that well, you can get uh, additional state money. So it's yeah. a circuit breaker. Uh, no, well, that's circuit no. breaker and then there's another one. Yeah, extraordinary that, extraordinary that only happens <laughs> I don't think if your yeah, special yeah. expenses we, we, grow by more than 25%, okay. I think it is. Okay. We've only gotten that a couple of times. We got it a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, which again, kind I of think it was was it almost any expenses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we, we didn't qualify for extraordinary for an example. That's like that could be yeah. the one I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah. Is yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. So yeah. basically, you you apply for extraordinary relief, and whether or not you, you right. know, they, they make a determination, yeah, savings determination. Um, I don't anticipate that we are going I don't to qualify for this year. But you apply every year. We apply every yes. year. We do we we do the work. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't work. And, and we applied the grants. And the Beacon Hill Gods were not good to us. Mm -hmm. Correct. Grants are not going to cover that kind of thing. Yeah. <coughs> um, 
But I, I, but I guess going back to the, the question about the 1% versus 2%, I, I think, you know, we'll have our, our level service budget, and then, you know, I think the thing we can look at is, is a prioritized list of things that we won't <coughs> be able to do, you know, if, again, if we're only at 1% or 2% versus the 5.2% that we're asking. You know. mm -hmm. So you, you could be looking at positional cuts, you could be program cuts and so forth um, for, in order to come back to meet that, to meet that number, which takes all of the steam out of, out of the sales as to, as to what we've got going, um, which I think is a, is a real positive. I think that people are saying Well, I can tell you positive you're positive. I'm positive about changes and what, what you've been able to do mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. Thank you. Excellent. I really appreciate everyone showing up. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Hey, Brad. Maybe you could spend the next couple of months here <laughs> trying to figure out how to get to 5.2% for the school. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> See? Although I have the conflict oh, somewhere. I'm not sure where. <laughs> it's like the science curriculum. <laughs> Thank you for opening the door now. Thank you very much. Can I? Because no, no air in here with that door closed. It's. It's even opening the door does just to okay. lose the air in here. But I changed your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hot? Oh, no. Well, I am too, but it, it, it gets deadly in here. The air is like <laughs> negative pressure Stale. or something. Mm. Hi, Carol, for the floor. No, it's nice. Sorry, I was late, everybody. Oh, thank you for coming. And thank you for letting me know you're going to be late. I thought it was perfect. Four o'clock this morning. I'm like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And I've got an appointment <laughs> far away. I'm going to be in Quincy at 2 oh, and then charge them at 5. It worked. Yeah. I just went. Get a ticket coming through now. Next time you're on your Google Earth, mm -hmm. look at go to camp and, mm -hmm. and look where we, go. we have color and 95. Who authorized that about. color? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see where they built the ramps yeah. for the interstate to go to Boston before they yeah. canceled it. Oh. So these ramps to nowhere oh. are, are <laughs> clear as can be from Google Earth, but camp <laughs> is the town when it happens. Who, who did this? Uh, who did this document come from? Matt. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, one. Okay. Thank you. Oh, good. There you go. I need one. More. Have you got one more, Jean? Um, <coughs> or two more. <coughs> Revenue. <coughs> uh, Dick needs one, and uh, Mike needs one. I have one. this one. Is that no. Just one. Have that one. That one? I don't have one, one of those either. Oh, and one more for Mike. Uh, Mike has one. So I've got one that will pick you in here. Correct. back up to the revenue. Oh, Jean. Thank you, by the way, earlier for the estimated numbers <coughs> in the earlier conversation. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Alan, for noticing. Mm -hmm. You know what's not an estimate is the $643,647 that Douglas Public Schools received from the override. So an answer, an honest answer to your question is their level funded budget went up by 3.5% last year as a result of the override. The total education budget would have been up substantially even with the level funding of the Douglas Public Schools 
because of the increases in BBT and all that yeah. and school transportation. Yeah. I must have a mind that just can't crisscross <coughs> these types of conversations because what you just said is clearer to me than the answer I got in the earlier part of the meeting. I appreciate that. But it's still not quite clear. And so if I may, quickly, and I, it's late and I want to move on. Um, so when the override was approved and that money became available for FY19, how did that money, was there a budget a year ago? No. There was How a supplemental that, budget in Article 3. Right. In November? October, no. November? No, it, it, no, it was town meeting. meeting. Yeah. It took effect in July. Okay. We did the regular budget, then there was a supplemental From last budget. May. Yeah. And the From last May. May. If, yeah. if it's approved, here's the number. Here are the numbers. Right. And that budget, once approved, was a 3.5% increase from the previous fiscal year for level services. Well, I think no. Or well, I is think, that where the I increase? Think the, the paperwork yeah. you were distributed tonight indicated a number of positions. They Those are the they positions added that they added to. Okay. Yes. Got it. So they increased the base. Got it. So it when Brett said this won't change anything, and it, I got lost, he really meant because we already changed it. We already had those positions. But then right, after so that, well, every year level service means something different. It means what you did the year before. So mm -hmm. if the year before was added some things, or right, add some right, things, right, and the right. next year that'll be the level service. But the things I'm not quibbling with them too much. I just want to be clear. I mean, the yeah. facts are in black and white. There was a lot of money. It was a conscious decision to do that to improve the competitiveness of the yep. public schools, and to try to, and the numbers are impressive just in one year turnaround yep. in terms of choice in, choice numbers. out, BBT, yeah. don't forget sure. it, it's great. But we also do live in a world with parameters. Yeah. So the base went up. So anything you add this year is on top of that base. Right. So a five and a half on top of a three and a half is a nine. Yes. Right, right. So We're did, prop two and did a half not two they and also half. add additional money from their uh, accounts, their school choice accounts and their everything well, else? I, I think that's yeah, a question for next next okay. meeting is, you know, as part of their budget, did year. they utilize to the extent they thought they would in FY19, okay. you know, the, okay. the, the school choice and right. the... Um, Correct. A, a good solid business meeting would be that. A disclosure of all the carryover funds that yeah. were utilized to supplement the budget and two, what are the drivers of activity? And are there any resolution points for those drivers? So if the driver is special education, how much can you reasonably hope Circuit Breaker exactly. might bail you out the following year? What is Circuit Breaker? Oh my goodness. It's and a really reimbursement well, for SPED. Reading for a long it's flight, it's a very it's complicated... It's a formula the state uses and we yeah. don't it's get... It's a, a reimbursement from the state. It's okay. okay. It lags, but the most important thing to know is it lags by a year. Yep. Okay. So you bear the expense today, mm -hmm. and then you apply and you document and you might and get some, some of it back okay. the next year. Yeah. Some weird percentage, not a lot. Yes, okay. it's woefully it's, under. It's over a certain threshold, too. You have to, yeah. you know, spend X amount before you get a percentage back. Yeah. Yeah, that, that really pretty it's much does it. Okay. Be, if you don't have to administer it, you don't yeah. get to know how it works. Yeah. That's my, that's my <laughs> reasoning. <laughs> I'm not trying to figure it out. <laughs> I write the code for the formula. It's going to take way too long. Are you going to be going first? Um, I'll, I'll let you. you know, run I, I will kind of just try to frame it, and I think Gene is much better than I on the details. This is the revenue spreadsheet from the five year budget model. Mm -hmm. So it relates historical data in order to frame the conversation, and it projects out five years from the fiscal year we're in. We're in fiscal 19, so the last year of the budget model is fiscal 24. Those items that are in blue are calculations. The items that are shaded in brown are hard values. They're values that we place in there without doing calculations because we've determined the number outside. So they're not <coughs> sensitive to variables that we want to change. But we pretty much have some idea what our uh, excluded debt service is going to be, for instance. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's kind of... 
Thank you, Background Howard. noise. Is he, is he going to just mention something to them? No, I think he's, I think he's just going to shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Folks. So those, the, that brown shading includes all, everything filled in under the preliminary cherry sheet. So that, that preliminary form that we got, those numbers are subject to change, but we don't right calculate Right now they're static. Them. Right now we put them in because that's what the governor is going to propose. That includes the assessments, and it also includes numbers received from BDT uh, on the, their debt. So the revenue projection for fiscal 2020 is $29,493,388 are the total funds available for appropriation. The lion's share of that, obviously, is from the levy. Yeah. And you'll notice one stark difference is there's no use of free cash for the yeah. operation. Uh -huh. None at all. Um, mm -hmm. New growth, we have uh, typically budgeted 80000 in new growth. That is a very nice, conservative, responsible number. We are budgeting 125000 this year because we have very solid information that suggests that the number should be higher, <coughs> and that's the pipeline, the pipeline of building permits and other activity, subdivision activity. Um, and most of all, uh, the 40B project. Yeah. So we know that we'll be incorporating new growth. But we don't keep it in the budget past one year. We will not look at that for more than one year. I have broken out separately under the estimated local receipts, which we budget, again, conservatively to go up 2% year over year. A building permits line for the 40B project separately. That is not going to be a source of revenue that lasts forever. When the project is over, those that building permit activity will cease. I'd like to also have it pulled out because we, on the expense side of the budget, we have um, contracted out for inspection services for the 40B project only. So you probably see the vehicle in the town hall parking lot for Four Leaf. They won the contract. They do this kind of work. So they do large commercial development. They do the inspection. They are licensed Massachusetts building commissioners and building inspectors. They supplement our building official who gives us 19 hours a week. The 40B could be anywhere from 8 to 10 hours a week. So we can't put that the, kind of burden on us. But the builder is paying for that, is he not? The owner of the They have through the permit. Yeah. Right. So that comes in as local as mm -hmm. receipts. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I think the only other, well, I certainly would like to draw out that the, the debt service, uh, the debt exclusions, no, that's not, you didn't refund for that one, so that's not going to show up here. Um, no, the, it will show up in FY20. The savings will show up in 20. I, I think you're all aware that we refunded and we financed uh, the school debt that was authorized, so we saved about, was it? million dollars. About a million dollars. Yeah. 78,000 a year. So. Yeah. So that's the revenue picture. That, that we think we feel like that number is very firm. So at this point, what are we doing? We're scrubbing the expense budget. We're scrubbing the personnel budget. Which must be this piece page down here, yeah, right? questions? No. Nope. Oh, the expense budget is not Tonight was revenue. Okay. Oh, tonight is revenue? Oh, yeah. Jean. Yeah, Jean. That was Jean's. Okay. So the only thing I supplied you as backup documentation mm -hmm. um, was the cherry sheet. Yep. So you have the cherry sheet estimates and receipts, and also a history of the local receipts uh, to show uh, where we have been. Again, we went up 2%, plus we added an additional 40,000 um, regarding the, 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 the project costs, and that's listed separately. So this is just backup to the numbers that you have here. Mm -hmm. yeah. when, well, when are these numbers for sure? I mean, this is what uh, I have to do. Uh, after July. Okay. Because yeah. we use House One until yeah. the final. It's signing the through. document. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you hope it's July, unless they get hung up doing something. Oh, please don't. I mean, it's, oh, it's, I know. it's, it's been November July. July. Tonight, you know, <laughs> time. There were some changes last year from cool, House cool. One to. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So 
So we use house one through the, until we receive the final cherry sheet numbers. And that's why we do an adjustment to the budget in the fall town meeting. I have a question. The tax bills that everybody got in January, did that include the override? Okay. Yeah. Does that make you happier? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah that more had to be something. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're the first one that said that. Well, and thing. a couple What's of, um, <laughs> didn't we have a debt exclusion in there too? Or two? No? No debt exclusion? No, we had the savings of the refinancing. You're going to see in FY20. Okay. But okay. Um, the last two we did was the cut tracing cleaner and the pumper truck. We, okay. we did a transfer from the remaining school construction project. Uh, so that's we didn't have to right. Borrow. Wasn't there a reassessment or revaluation that was done recently? They did, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah that's year. what it was. Yeah. Okay. Right. But it didn't change the base. It just no, no, no. It just, base. right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. You know, somebody's tax bill could have gone up or down because right. their neighbor built a garage or installed a pool or something. Right. You know. Right. You know, right. The base values didn't change changed. because of it. It just, right. the right. allocation of it did. Yeah. So I have a question. If we're, I, again, I get the, the whole premise of, you know, what we're doing with free cash, and I agree with that. What's the balance at right now? We um, just got it certified. We did. Yeah. Is it yeah, on here? And I totally overlooked page. it. You did overlook it. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. uh, so we were one. certified at one million three hundred twenty-one thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars. Uh, we did um, transfer money out or use or use money at the fall town meeting of one hundred nine thousand eight hundred ninety dollars. So the balance of unappropriated free cash is one million two hundred eleven thousand seven hundred thirty-two dollars. Now, okay. just keep in mind, you're going to have the snow and ice. Oh, and we're right. going to utilize right. that. Um, right. We did utilize two hundred fifteen thousand of free cash towards snow and ice last year. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll have a lot of capital needs too, I'm sure. The capital needs. I think you're going to hear a report as yeah. to what you authorized with snow and ice a little bit later tonight. So um, we're already into the negative on that. That's surprising. I'd run my snowblower three times this whole winter. How many ice storms? Yeah, it's the ice. Yeah. How, how much? How much no, of the street did you do? It's ice. At it's 4 a.m. On yeah. the back hills, on the back roads in Douglas. Yeah. I no live way. on a back road. Yeah. But you have school buses. There's no way. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a lot. I mean, yeah, if, if you get a little drizzle in the middle of the night, they, yep, they send the to. trucks out. Or and that's yeah. that's 15 mm -hmm. grand it's right there, just just sand in the roads. You might live with a little ice on your on your driveway and stuff, but. You know, they have to send them out. Yeah. And I think that's where people are they surprised. Because they, they wake up and everything's fine. They don't realize the right. trucks are bound. Like, right. Get yourself a scanner and listen to these guys. Oh, or go geez. to the outer towns and, and just watch their roads because I'm on the road at 4 yeah, o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm does a fabulous job. They yeah. do do a good job in this town. Well, you unfortunately, know it's a game of being nickel and dime. Can't get out dime. of my driveway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, these little ice storms oh, nickel and dime. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the basic rule of thumb is when you see the trucks go by, it's nine thousand okay. dollars. Just figure that. So if you're in a storm and they plow three times and they put salt down, it's, if it's been by three times, it's twenty-seven thousand dollars storm. Okay. We've only had two or three storms that really put them out there three or four times. Um, but the budget, you remember what the base is. The base was a hundred and fifty-five right. thousand. Yeah, and that we. I fought to get up. I mean, we don't, our base is nowhere near yeah. what really. Well, the goal was to get it up because it's silly to deficit spend it exactly. every year and right. pretend that you don't know anything. You agree hunger. with me. Yeah, I've been fighting for this for years. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's got to go on. She has been yeah. fighting for it. Yeah. Yes, she has. We have not And I've been going, now. that doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. I get the sense that it is up, though, yeah. Carol. I mean, it is up. I know. Right now, we're at 47000 uh, for snow and ice, which is a manageable number. We've got snow coming tomorrow night, I guess, a couple of inches. Uh, so are we, are we, are we, we're over? I mean, I, did I, Yeah, did we're I over the 155. And what was so the number? 20, 40? 47. 47. Well, that's, let me back up. 75 over, Guys. 70 over. Because we'll, we brought, I brought them up to 225, so I gave them 70, but they've already Well, spent, the Finance Committee does need to have, take a vote also, I believe, so I just... You get notice. No, you, you receive notice now. I'm sorry? You received notice. Oh, it's notice. changed? Yes, it did change oh. a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so they were over 75? 75. Okay. And they have, the, I misspoke, they're over by 75, they have 47 of that left because they were yeah. already 27. Sure. Yeah. 20. Got it. Gotcha. 
But the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. So far, let's yeah. not get, yeah. we're not out of no. winter yet. The groundhog yeah, exactly. said it's an early spring. Okay. Mm -hmm. The groundhog right. and the robins <laughs> right. are five because they've all been around. <laughs> They're all wrong. Um, and what was it a few years ago when, boy, it looked like we were having such a beautiful winter. We didn't get yeah. anything. And then it March. started. Yeah. March again. Uh, March, we were showing off the snow in April. And <laughs> snow. Every Monday, April. 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 Every Monday, Yes. I, I do think there is something that you need to know. The expense budget, I'm really just holding it back for one reason, and that's the health insurance joint purchasing group conversation. It yeah, will what, all what about our, our, our booklets that I asked for? Can we get you booklets? you got to get that. i got to finish that part of the budget. You, you you're going to you're gonna put those booklets together next week? Um, somehow. I'll come pick them up. I really, I, yeah. we need we need stuff in writing. Yeah. I mean, right now we're going... Where, where is everybody? Well, we have nothing in writing. Yeah. Except we just got the police budget. Right. And so. what you'll notice is that almost nothing's changed from last year. And it won't change for the year after that well. year. But in any case, yep. you'll get the booklets. But the swing for health insurance, if it doesn't materialize, it completely changes everything. So yeah. any booklet I give you tonight, I would be taking back from the Illinois. And that, what so we get the is, swing, the, there are blanks. I know, the blanks just, are allowed. <laughs> That one's no, it's not, a blank. not not done yet. It's not a blank. Well, because no, let me finish and you'll yeah, understand ahead, why I'm, what I'm saying. The difference between a 1.4 percent increase and a 10.8 percent sure. increase is two hundred and seventy-two thousand yep. dollars. So right now, I have put the low number in because I'm optimistic that anybody will see the light here and work with us to do the self-insurance model. And if that is the case, then there is flexibility in the budget. If that's not the case, then I am in a completely different yeah, yeah, mode. I'm cutting a six-digit number out of the budget with a 2% of the schools. Okay, so that's the premise. So that is a huge thing. On Monday, we'll be meeting with all of the faculty at the schools. It's the marathon meeting all afternoon to explain the potential change, the proposed change. On Tuesday night, the Board of Selectmen will review the agreement. And on Thursday, um, we're hoping to have some closure from all the unions. We will have a joint insurance advisory committee meeting with the town of Webster's employees at the Webster Public Library, where we will collectively interview the finalists for the bid, which one of the finalists, Harvard Building. So hopefully by the end of this So they week, have the bids come in? Or yeah, because yeah. they were solicited. We needed a number to come back to you guys with to say this is what has been bid. You need to know what you're going to save or not save before you join the joint purchasing group. You don't want to join it and then put the bid out. That's nuts. That would be <laughs> yeah, right. the dice. So we, we did everything. We got a bid from our, we got a renewal quote. Then we got bids from the marketplace because we didn't like the renewal quote. And then the joint purchasing group put together the structure of the plans that they want to offer, and that was put out as a self-insured product. And we got bids from the third-party administrators for all of those. And the working rate was estimated based on those bids. So that's where we are in the decision-making point. I think the powerful thing is that with an 80-20 split, which is not going to change for our employees, they're going to stay with an 80-20, a 10.8% increase in their premium is $479 out of their paycheck regardless of how much money they make. So if you're a clerk and you're earning $28,000, $29,000 a year, that $479 is coming out of your paycheck. So it's a pretty significant uh, draw to our employees. At a 1.4% increase, it's $62. So I think we've done our job. We're, we're driving a hard bargain, and hopefully our employees will go along with us and we can sew this up. But once that number is locked down, <coughs> the rest of the budget flows from it. But I'm reluctant to do anything. You know, I'm 150, 160 in the black to <laughs> 110 in the red. It's a really different approach to the expense budget and personnel budget. You heard the small things that Chief Miglianico was asking for would, wouldn't materialize. And, and just so one other comment. With the joint person, our benefits would not change. So the Douglas employees would maintain the same level of benefits that we have. Wow. Yeah, virtually everything is the same. So the bid was modeled on our plan. Yeah. So the only thing that would change is actually an improvement. So if we brought all the business over to a self-insured model administered by the Harvard Pilgrim, the 
retirees would see an important change. They would have access because of alliances made in the market. Harvard Pilgrim retirees have access to the United Healthcare Network nationwide. So if you're in Florida, you're a retiree from the Douglas gotcha. system. As long as you can find somebody in the United Network, you still pay in network costs rather than huh. paying out of network. Which is virtually impossible not to find someone. In the United, exactly. Isn't that that's the, that's the deal? And if you have a 26, a 20 some odd year old kid in college who's still on your insurance and they're out of state, they can find somebody in the network that pay in network hmm. fees. So that's a pretty big deal. So, what, what towns are uh, Kind of getting in the Dudley. So now, uh, let me uh, make that change too. Yeah. So oh. Dudley Charlton School District, uh, yeah. the town of Webster, and yeah. the town of Douglas. That's never changed. That's been the core group. Yeah. Okay. Millbury has such a good claims experience that they got a huge rate fight going. And Maya came in and bought the business. Now there's a trap there, and I think everybody in Millbury knows it. That next year they're going to look at an increase. There's no way Maya's going to be able to sustain this with a Blue Cross plan. But they bought the business this year, they, so they saw a, a rate decrease, so mm. they didn't join us. Um, mm. And it was controversial, and it was a divided vote. But interestingly enough, this week there's another town, and I don't feel comfortable. Oh, um, yeah. <coughs> it's if out of just our region, uh, mm. but it is a large, larger town. And if they join us, they have good claims experience. But more importantly, they would take us from. Uh, a little over a thousand actives to over sixteen hundred actives, and the total group right now are over fifteen hundred with our retirees. We take us over two thousand, mm -hmm. so that that makes us a very attractive group. Now, what do you like with retirees? Like once they're over sixty-five, you're on some Medicare or something. You're on a Medicare supplemental plan, right? So, but would that Medicare supplemental plan be? What are you, are you going Harvard Pilgrim? Would that be what it would be? It would be, so right now it's Tufts. Mm -hmm. It's Tufts. And it would go to a self-insured. Yeah. You know, the, 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 self, the joint purchasing group would buy the supplemental insurance uh, that would be supplementing the Medicare. And the premiums are split 50-50. That tends to be a very stable rate structure. It doesn't change that much yeah. from the So 50-50 between the retiree and, and the... Yeah. And, um, so your twenty thousand dollar plan is yeah. ten thousand each. Okay. Whereas if you're active, the twenty thousand dollar plan is sixteen on the town and four on the employee. You know that the retired the retiree Medicare plans are like four times more expensive than they are by them yourself. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You mean to go through the town and be better off if they were on their own? That's an interesting uh, but then, would the insurance the difference companies is not take the Medicare some plans that are that are the retiree plans? Yeah. They don't have a donut hole with the drug portion. Yeah, that's, that's a huge difference. So <laughs> uh, that's because there's a third party. But by 2020, the donut hole's supposed to close or be like it's. Yeah. We'll see what happens yeah. there. But I've moved lots of people from retiree plans to their own individual, their own plan, individual plan and they've saved a whole lot of money. <coughs> Jesus man. It depends on who you are though. That. I mean if you if you're stuck in that donut hole. <coughs> yeah. Right. One in nine people hit the donut hole. Yeah. yeah. So it's not money. It's not that money. And they keep changing the donut hole every year. Yeah. yeah. So what is the donut hole? Around six thousand or something? No. The donut hole you hit the donut hole at three thousand eight hundred and twenty. Oh, okay. And you come out at 5100 and when you're in the donut hall, you pay 25% of a brand name drug, 38% oh, okay. of a generic. You're in the donut hall. When you're in the donut hall. And what if you get out of the donut We're not going to be hall. talking health okay. insurance anymore <laughs> since we need to move on. We can on. do that offline. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, talk okay. to her. I'm not, I'm not a, a town employee, so it doesn't affect no. me. No. And you don't have to worry about the donut hall. Never been. Okay. Um, on our agenda, we were going to have Matt talk about things, and I guess he's talked all he wants to, or all his brain will allow. <laughs> well, I'm still just going back and forth between the other meeting next door, but um, no, I think I covered it. I mean, I think that's really where, where it's at right now, and we've already accommodated. The budget that I have that I feel comfortable with that has all, some flexibility in it if the health insurance proposal is accepted by employees mm -hmm. is inclusive of the request of the department heads. So the things you heard tonight yeah, like, are built that are But we have in. not seen what the department heads want. No, just we've not seen the request. The that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm asking for the finance committee. I want to see those individual budgets broken down 
the way we have seen it forever. And we're not, we didn't get it last year, and we need it this year. Oh, you got it last year. I don't know. I don't, so we didn't have any budget books. Detail. No, you didn't get the book, but you got spreadsheets that okay. right down to well, the I'd, I'd like Well, I'd like the books and, uh, so that we can put information that are yearly information about well, revenues and stuff. It's a big, pile of paper that doesn't so. much. <laughs> but, um, now, I see that we have more minutes than what I've got listed on this, and I'd like to postpone minutes. Okay. Till next week, or, or two weeks. Um, we need to talk about whether or not we're going to be upscheduling, increasing our, our meetings. As you can see from looking at this document, which I put together last October, um, I mean, we missed a meeting because of a snow yeah. last, last, last time. But we're behind. I, I, and tell me, <coughs> or check off, or let's talk about <coughs> remaining departments. <coughs> Excuse me. In public safety, this room is dry. <coughs> That's. Can I take a get some water? I'll be, I'll be okay. Um, public safety. I guess we're done with one of them, police. <coughs> but we've got millions of other departments to do. What is your desire, Finance Committee? <coughs> I guess we'll see the school next week. Two weeks. Two weeks on the 12th. <coughs> Can we schedule Blackstone Valley then as well? Do both schools? Isn't the school on the 19th, though? I think we're going the 12th is BB2. Library. No, no, this is, this is my schedule that I wrote as a proposed schedule. No one appears to be going by it, but that's okay. We'll get back on schedule. Oh, Jean. <laughs> Would Thank you, you hear some hey, lifesaver? Did anybody else want one? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> 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 I, I, could, I could feel my <laughs> <they'd> throat <laughs> tightening up. <laughs> well, you talk about donuts, right? Well, next no. time I think donut holes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. It's the dryness. I, this just happened to have to be at Board of Selectmen meetings. Got to just cough. Do we want to talk to each of these departments? I guess that's my question. I mean, is, are any departments anticipating huge changes? Sure. Anybody know? Matt, you should know, right? There's no room for huge changes anywhere. Uh, so well, that's, a, that's an easy way out. Change, but yeah, huh? Right? Yeah. But there's no room for a change. Mm -hmm. the, uh, There's things to talk about briefly with each one. Okay. I think what we'll be looking at is the structure of the building department mm -hmm. going forward. But really, it comes down to health insurance. <coughs> well, well, wow, so that might be on your plate. The Finance Committee has all the rest of these on our plate because so, we, we do. We, we yeah, I, I know, know everyone know, looks know forward to talking to us. Look, a paper clip is a paper clip. So oh, if we bought 100 okay. paper clips last right. year, we buy buy 100 paper clips this year. All right. So can we talk about, Good. we've got a meeting on March 12th set up. We've got BVT presenting. Well, no, we, we, that, that, again, Harwood, yep. this is my proposal. I understand. This, it is, I, I know asking. not whether it's coming to fruition or not. I'm Ooh. talking Still to the. Still you the school department. Douglas Public Schools is yep. on the 12th. Right. Okay. Into Fantastic. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. To the question of should we have BBT on the same yep. night, I would suggest yes. Yeah. How do we arrange that? I would, I would Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who does? Okay. So, yeah. Uh, Matt, okay. you're going to yeah. give right. them a call? Pass Dr. Fitzpatrick Phil, or whoever is designated. And is there any any other group that people want to see on the twelfth? We've got a, a con we've got a that, joint meeting on the nineteenth, and we've got other agendas. No, we don't. Other? We don't have any. These oh. are proposals. These are PM right. proposals. Fair got it. Got it. Okay. So Lovely. I think you were asking, should we have more than two meetings a month? I, I, I right. I if wanna you know, want to know. Just want if everybody's good people, on it, we're gonna do. We a, we're to gonna go, blast through it. We Who? need to go with the third meeting a month, maybe. At least Who else yeah. do we want to see? That's 
right. what I'm proposing to the asking the finance committee. Who else do we want to see? Highway department? No, no, not for me. No, no. Are they asking for any equipment? I, I, I don't think so. Yep. They've got equipment that I know they just got, but yeah, a bunch. Fire, ambulance. But how are they doing, Gene? You've always got to see them. Yeah, I think you want to see yeah, the public okay. safety. Okay. Yeah. They're on the right. revenue side as well as the yep. All right. Side. right. I mean, can't we, Board of Health, Building Department, Community Development, can't we put them in on one meeting? I mean, it's absolutely. Be a long, a long thing. Absolutely, they will. I don't think it'll be that long. But I think it's good to have them in. Yeah. Well, we've got changes going on there. Yeah. So. The Board of Health, they, they do the dump too as well, but that's an enterprise, so that one's, that, I mean, oh, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, bite my tongue. You can tell Carol's attending. Okay, so do you want to do March 12th and then March uh, 19th? Or do you want to back it up and do March 5th? I'm going to be gone on the 19th. Okay. So, but and you, you lose Matt on the alternate weeks because mm -hmm. he's at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. Well, Right. Right. Well, that oh, yeah. too. I mean, I'm thinking we'll we'll probably meet in the board of selectmen's office if you know. Are we dipping into winter vacations, perhaps. Winter vacation. It's a winter vacation. <laughs> yeah, I know. These bronzed beauties here beside me. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I I have a commitment on the night. Okay. Okay. All right. Then uh, do you want to do you want to try for mouth? So the next meeting is in two weeks, which is let's let's stop there and then move move forward. So can we all be here on the nineteenth for a? Uh, yep. A meeting. So we're going to be here the twelfth and the nineteenth. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be okay. going on the nineteenth. Okay. Okay. And we'll meet with. Um, Board of Health, Building Department, and Community Development? Uh, let me reach out to them okay. to make sure they're available. So okay. let me just make this straight, to get this straight. Um, you want to meet with the Board of Health, Building Department, Community Development, and the Fire and Ambulance. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What about yes. public? Yeah, no, that'll work. No highway and no building maintenance here? Can you squeeze them in next week? I mean, on the 12th? Well, we've got the school committee. I would do them okay. first because they should probably they're be going to take a long time. Yeah, yeah they're going to take a long oh, time. No, so I, I you, would, you can well, squeeze the I would public. Put them in the order. That <coughs> I would switch. Yeah. <laughs> switch and put, put the highway, the highway and public yeah. safety yeah. first before the school committee. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just because. Right. You're thinking like a. Like a <laughs> so you're going to have BBT that same day? If they're oh. available, Matt will reach out to them. Yeah, if probably. not, I mean, we'll work mm -hmm. them out, mm -hmm. try to work them out between the 12th and the 19th. Mm -hmm. it, it, to me, it's more important that you get the departments here and not necessarily the order. We'll worry about the order for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we have the departments that you're requesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we got on the, on the 12th? We're going to have the... BBT and, and hopefully, school and Douglas School Committee. committee. That's, That's for sure. sure. We know the school committee. And hopefully the BBT. Mm -hmm. If BBT doesn't do it, let me know and then we can maybe ask them. Library Council on Aging and um, the Town Hall departments we could do uh, in April. See, what I'm working backwards from is the public hearing, which I think we should have April 9th. Mm -hmm. um, you can't change that. I think that's kind of stuck. Is well, I mean, I, I, time wise, stuck? Time wise, I don't think we can. Now, here's the deal. Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on a second. The flyers. Is April the flyers 9th is the exact date stuck? If my memory serves me, that is almost like the latest you could do it because Suzanne needs time to turn right. around the flyers. The 16th is Does which? it have to be a Tuesday? <laughs> no. No. We can do it on Wednesday. I have a conflict on April 9th. Okay. Is that opening day? Let's try it for April 10th. <laughs> wow. Gene, I, the accusations. I, I, don't, I, I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. So <laughs> I won't mention the estimates again, okay? <laughs> Am I going to be jealous? Wow. That's all I want to know. No comment. <laughs> oh. I just want to know if I'm going to be jealous. 
Okay. Um, let's do it for the let's do it for the Wednesday. Is everybody okay on Wednesday night? What, which date? The tenth. Uh, the tenth of April. I think I'm on a business meeting flying that morning. I will confirm and send you an email tomorrow morning. Okay. So let's try for the public hearing then, because then six days later, Suzanne needs the. So we need to. We're going we're gonna to need to vote on the budget as well. Now we can vote that same night. Again, this is all how you, you have to figure out what, what's going to happen. What are the actions that need to take place? Do we need a whole other meeting after the public hearing? Generally, the public hearing is going to go pretty well. Mm -hmm. I can let Matt read off his, his uh, departmental uh, uh, requests and, and the uh, amounts that are being funded or someone else. Well, uh, what was the Wednesday you wanted to meet? April the 10th. April 10th. Yeah. Okay. Public hearing for Finance Committee budget. Gotcha. And so after we receive the public hearing, the input from the public who has had access to our possibilities, that's when we make our recommendations. And that between at that time is when I'll I'll well we also have there there'll also be articles on the on the <coughs> warrant that we'll have to vote on. Uh, <coughs> So backing up from the 10th, yep. we have four available Tuesdays, the right. 12th, 19th, 26th, and the 2nd. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Are we looking to do four of those out of four or three out of four? Twelfth, right. 19th. Okay. Four available Tuesdays between now and the 10th. Obviously yeah, I know. That's, that, that's why I brought this tonight. Right. I mean, right. we better do this. So, so we've talked about March 12th. <coughs> Have we talked about those four or five <coughs> groups for March 19th? Jean, you've Again, got those Again, I notes? have to talk to the departments right. because okay. if they're not available, it's not going to work. Um, right. So I guess what I need from you is the commitment for the dates. And then we'll work on right. the scheduling. Right. Maybe right. we like should plan on those three weeks in a row and bang through as much as we can. And then if we need to go to the first week of April. 12th, 19th, 26th. Yeah, Lynn, okay. I think that's right. Right, we're just adding and the, then, and then adding the, the one day. And uh, then right. I've got April 2nd. That's <coughs> actually the very next Tuesday. So there's four in a row. So is everybody happy with that? Do we need, do we need the second? I thought um, Lynn's concept was hit it on the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th. Right. And, and on the 26th, and we'll what see I'm where we what stand. I, what I wrote we can here clarify the then, yeah. then we're set up for our April 10th. What I, what, I just, what I put in for the second was vote on articles. Those are the articles for the town meeting rather mm -hmm. than the budget itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I, how many articles do we know how many articles there are? Not off the top of my head. There's yeah. going to be a few, and some of it will depend on other things that are going on. I, I think after what I heard tonight, there'll be at least one payment or taxes agreement. There will be a, a, a fair number of zoning issues. What would be left for the 26th if we try to hit all the departments on the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th? that we wanted to see. Again, assuming this is, this assuming is that you could schedule what we've already talked about for the twelfth and the nineteenth. Gene, what would that leave us for the twenty sixth? Um you'd probably be if you're gonna be talking about the articles on April second, I'd almost want the town engineer at that time because otherwise he's coming to two meetings. Fine. Would you agree? Sure. Matt? Yeah, kind I mean, of cut down. I mean, that goes to a lot of meetings. Sure. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So, um, so I would move community development to April second. Okay. Mm -hmm. And was the consensus that you wanted the library in the ceiling, or? Are they changing their budget? They're doing a lot down at the library. I'd like to talk to them. I think. But the council on aging hasn't had much change. The library maybe has But they're override. the seniors. They, they are the seniors. Um, again, I, it's up to you. Yeah. How many groups do you have penciled in for the 19th current? 
I don't have any until I talk to them. Just on <coughs> what we've talked about tonight. If you're putting on the 12th, the school department, BBT, highway and public building maintenance, that would leave probably fire and ambulance, board of health, building. Community development. Oh, no, not. No, no cross that library. Okay. Yep. For the right. 19th. The 26th would probably be, only because I want to push them out a little bit, um, Matt's departments and town hall town hall which would be really health insurance um property mm -hmm. property liability you know those other big okay. big numbers anything else uh then run with that that then that then bill would only have to come to the on the second in the second yeah mm -hmm. everyone good with that if he's available lynn yes yeah we okay. don't have a choice well, well, no, we, well, we've got to put it, work? Put, it, put it in writing and we'll yeah. see if it, it's working. Yeah, I mean, we've got to go. <laughs> doing hand scratching here. Basically, four weeks. Is there a meeting April 9 and April 10 then? No, no just no. the 10th. We'll do right. the 10th. So not the 9th. Cross okay. off the 9th. Gotcha. We'll do the 10th. Was this fun? Okay. So, so what are we having on the 19th <laughs> then? The 19th of the meeting. I'm going to try to meet with who? Jean's um, got we'll we'll schedule. Just send it out. Yeah. 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 schedule it and send us a memo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? Can we go? Yeah, yeah. right? I really you did a great job. Yeah, I really can't promise that. Yeah. I'm going to try to get them all in. When does the planning board, what nights do they meet? We Tuesdays. They Tuesdays. met tonight. They met tonight. Okay. Because usually, as far as community development, uh, the planning board doesn't usually the town engineer here for that anyway. Yeah, he covers all of them. For those. So, uh, is there any way that, uh, that he might be able to come in after one of those meetings to see us? Uh, I'm trying. And to then he wouldn't have to go come a second night. Well, I'm all. trying to schedule him on the, the second. second only because yeah. you want to vote on There's the article. There's going to be some articles. Right. He's gonna, right. We're going to yeah. yeah. ask him. He's here anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. We're trying to maximize. I that. second yes. Mike's motion for you to send it. Talk to everybody you can. Schedule yeah. everybody that you can. Mm -hmm. Send us a memo. Tell us when we show up. We'll be here. Okay, you're showing up the 12th, 19th, 26th, the 2nd, and the 10th. We yeah. appear to be. Five, That's when you're coming. Five weeks in a row. Howard. That's okay. It's <laughs> right. And May 6th as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we get a break between that last time. Anybody cares. And well, it'll be a surprise really when you get the email. Some as 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 coming as coming on. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Hot luck. <laughs> I think so. Okay. The anticipation is building. Mike, do you want to make another motion? <laughs> Your motion, motion to adjourn. I second that motion. Aye. Like Aye. Third, fourth, fifth, tenth. Right. Yeah. What Thursday? Okay. okay. All those in favor. Sorry. Aye. 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 A